Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome to the uh, Jesse Optional Podcast. <laughs> yep. It's like, be right back it's a, five it's a minutes earlier. because last time I was on this show, he was gone. I think it's... Oh it's, gosh, it, it's you. It was me. It was I was going to say, I've never seen you both in the same us. room at the same time. Let me hmm. try something. Maybe if I... No. No, no, it's not working. No, no. no. Good yeah, try, no. though. <laughs> it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. I mean, it's okay. We have Jesse's chair who contributes uh, for. Oh. oh, what the fuck. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Sorry. I just had to. Take off my. My Coors Light brand socks. Jesus Christ. And put them in my Coors Light brand gym bag with my Coors Light hat. And my Coors Light other hat, and my Coors Light sweater and flannel thing and undershirt, all because, wait, and this 48 cans of Coors Light that I got in the mail, all because of this awesome new game that is totally great that everyone should play, Coors Light <laughs> Refreshment. <laughs> what the fuck? It's the best game on the internet. You should play it. I have never played this game, but I imagine if but, it's as good as Coors Light, you know it's refresh. Men. Jesse, I, I got to ask the hard-hitting question. It, it feels a little bit like this is a paid advertisement. I mean, can we trust nope. your opinion? or is Here's this... the thing. You can trust it because I'm a man wearing four yeah. layers of medium-sized shirts right now. <laughs> it's, very, it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is very, very uncomfortable. I can't I just... even begin to describe. It's hot. It's hot and uncomfortable. But you know what isn't uncomfortable? The smooth taste of Coors yeah. Light. Jesse, you, I gotta be honest, man. You make me sick with your selling out. It's ridiculous. I know. It's, it's, it's gross. It's gross. Yeah. I get. I can't get enough of that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if people can see. Centrum the multivitamin layers. gummies. They don't taste terrible. Now I need. Now I'm gonna. Now I'm gonna have to strip down. I'm sorry. Hot it's mugs. so effing hot. The rest of well, the liquid goes in the toes. Stripping down. Which just made the dress code more lax, man. It's actually more illegal than ever before. Now, people were concerned in the chat that advertising alcohol on Twitch is not allowed. Don't worry, Coors Light is definitely not alcohol. It's not. No, no. it's like water. Yeah. Yep. Also, Coors Light. They gave me a shirt. <laughs> it doesn't qualify as beer. I, I, I no, consulted on that. No. What, what do I just bread? I, in I just want to let everyone know that I got a thing in the mail that was like, "Hey, try our new game, Refresh Men." There was no game in there. It was all merchandise. <laughs> the game beer. is drink all of these Coors Light and see I what happens. Not, I could not tell you what this game was, but I think it's a joke. I just don't know. But I don't care because, oh my god, they sent me a bunch of free beer. So, okay. But hang on. A, small, a, a detail came out of this. Yeah, you got beer. Did you say they sent you medium-sized shirts, Jesse? All medium. Oh, they they sent yeah, all medium, all medium size. I'm wearing medium right now, which is why I just look like a weirdo. Do not come in this office, Dodger. It is a shit show. It's, no. it's like when uh, that's like the don't, same feeling as when people are like, hey, Greg. Oh God, like, don't touch me. <laughs> it's like a little uh, crop top. That looks a bit. Oh man, what I gotta I I, I, like? Do, do you know uh, what uh, Sex in a Boat and Coors Light have in common? They're both fucking oh. close to water. Oh my god. It's so tight. Did you just make that? I mean, I probably stole it from somewhere, but... It's excellent. I mean, this is pretty good. You know, I like it. Yeah. She stole She stole my... Oh, shit! <laughs> How did she move that fast? I don't know. I'm not sure. <sighs> it's amazing. That is weird. It's uh, special effects. We upped the budget of the show Your recently. Your guys' production is through the roof. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, all that cause money really helped us a lot. One could one could say that it was a just cause. Just cause. Uh, just cause three. 
Just course. Ah, good. Welcome to the Crossfield Podcast. We do occasionally talk about video games and have incredible segues, not those dumb ones that the mall cops <sighs> ride around. Oh. Our special guest today, a second time returning guest. You know, wait. When it was suggested by, uh, I think it may, it may be third time. Here's the thing, I I was going through trying to find guests. I've actually booked a bunch of guests over the next couple of months because I was trying to find guests for the show, and I was like, we'd love to come on, just not this week. So I was like, okay, I'll book you in. So I booked in John Tron for like January. I think Pro Jared's coming on next week and all that kind of thing. So I was the like, great, bro Jared? Uh, yeah, the oh, Bro Jared. I was like, well, Jared? and then uh, we were watching the Great Food Truck Race downstairs the finale the great show love it awesome uh and jen said well why don't you invite uh jeff on the show i was like didn't we just have him and then i looked through i'm like was the last episode he was on episode like 37 a year and a half ago really has time flown that quickly i'm sure you've been on uh, this is not the second time is it it is it the is second time. it is the second time what, yeah. what the fuck happened i'm not for sure for the first time he would never be welcome back here but here he is <laughs> <laughs> yeah Crazy. <laughs> I'm like a rash. You can't get rid of me. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's, re- it's really strange. It's really strange. No, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I had, a, I had an absolute blast last time. Uh, we were just joking, just because you were off camera, presumably dressing yourself in teenage boys' beer clothes, and uh, it's true. That's what happened. I was I was here when you weren't here, and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm now, we're all together, and I'm excited to talk the games with y'all. Oh, you tried to good. time slip into your office, but it didn't work. Yeah, well, hang on. I'll do that right now. Oh, let's try it again. <laughs> <laughs> that would be... <laughs> Mind-blowing. I just go... Actually, that'd be the trippiest thing ever. I'm like, I'm like a Dodgers cam, and I'm in Jesse's, but then I go in fucking John's cam, and people are like, He's oh, not shit. there! This is not possible! <laughs> that would be amazing. We're yeah. all on a Zeppelin, guys, on, on the moon base. Yep, it's yep. true. We were going to invite JP, but Jenna's like, he's boring. Like, yeah. That well, is not true. Zeppelin material. That is true. I believe were her exact words. Yeah. Yeah. He's too <laughs> down to earth, you could say, right? Mm. Yeah. So hey, let, you guys we, are doing we, bad we puns. Could... I tried to help. Yeah, it's, it's cool. <laughs> I, I like I'm, I'm good with that, actually. Look, I'm, I'm down for all of them. That's that's the Yeah, yeah that's pretty much the show in a nutshell. Bad puns, yeah. Bad puns, stupid jokes. That, that's that's the way to go. Let's talk about video games. We've actually played way, way more than we did last week. Where last week's show was like, shit, we haven't played anything. What the hell are we going to do? Yes. <laughs> Just stretching that show out. It was back to was Overwatch discussion show, so. to piss off that one guy on the subreddit. It's like, let's talk about Overwatch for another hour. He's like, fuck! Well, it, wasn't, it wasn't Hearthstone, so he should be happy. If hey, anything, consider yourself he lucky. I almost invited half of one this week for a three-hour Hearthstone discussion. That'd be great. Oh, God. Oh, I'd, join <laughs> I'd join that guy on the subreddit and be like, no, I'm with you, bro. That was out of control. <laughs> Fuck this game. That- <laughs> too, Fuck much, this too game. much. Fuck TB. Fuck Hafu. That shit's bullshit. Love it. Hashtag <laughs> bullshit. F Trump. Um, I will let everybody know I did not play anything other than Overwatch since last oh, episode. Oh, God. <laughs> Because we were look, we were playing I was yesterday in San Antonio, and then I was in Oregon on the houseboat. So it was it was the holiday. So she played like the turkey bone trombone. Yeah, we just all right. Let's get the Overwatch discussion out at the start. I don't <laughs> even know what you're talking about. That sound that sounds like true? a blowjob reference. Yes. That's weird. The old turkey bone trombone. The old trom- turkey bone. trombone. If we're being you know a little bit more honest with ourselves, typically has to do with the butthole. But yeah, I... does it? The rusty oh, trombone. You guys never heard that? Ah, yes. Wait. Oh, I guess that's, that's true, huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The rusty trombone and the pink elbow. Yeah, but a turkey trombone. Cleaner. Is... Yeah. <laughs> One assumes. It's really messy. Yeah. It's been of... bleached. It's right. bleached. Bone, bone bleached. Yeah, we got there. It's like yeah. a... Did it. We did it, Reddit. We did it. <laughs> rusty trombone in LA. And it... We did it. <laughs> oh. I, this it's is expected ru- rusty trombone in LA with the bleached anus. We got it's going to be a great show. <laughs> we did it. We I'm looking there. forward to this. Job, we should get the Overwatch discussion out of the way at the start so that so that guy can skip it and then can play it on the subreddit later. We were playing yesterday on your stream, Dodger, if okay. I recall. That was uh that was over salt actually for a while. That was um Yeah, you just disappeared. It wasn't until we you were vanished. done with 
Whatever yeah. happened, you dis- I didn't. I didn't vanish. What are you talking about? Yeah, I play. Yeah. I play like six or seven games. And I'm like, you know, because I I'd said this is going to be my last game, guys. So I was off to go and <laughs> oh, do something else. None of oh. us heard you. Oh, yeah, you yeah, thought I just bailed on you? Yeah. Who so we were like, oh my go? god, did he just get so pissed off at us? No, we won? we won the last match, didn't we? So why would I get pissed off at that? Yeah. All I, don't I know. know is. Oh someone, come on. Someone needs to go find that footage where Dodger just loses her mind at a bad joke. <laughs> oh and god. The first six minutes of a match. Laughing and not doing anything, just laughing. I was doing stuff. I was trying to play through the tears. I was laughing so hard, I was sobbing (laughs) while also trying to play. No, ain't nothing that funny. Ain't nothing worth a six minute laugh. And then she'd keep herself laughing by going, Cheers, love. The cavalry's here. Over and over and over again. No, no, it was Hilly Dilly. I was trying to be Tracer as and Junk Junkrat, Rat, and that oh, was like God. the best crossover of obnoxiousness in the world. It was pretty terrible. You ever get that feeling of deja vu? <laughs> you ever get that feeling, deja vu? <laughs> Damn, I was stomping ground. British people love that character. They I'm told it. she's spot they on. Love it. She's exactly yeah, she is they yes. so accurate. Mm-hmm. Junkrat, too. Yep. I hear he is a perfectly accurate Australian. Absolutely. Holy dooly. <laughs> Holy dooly. Holy dooly. <laughs> I actually, so I, I actually had a really interesting conversation about Overwatch recently. I'm not going to name names just because uh, for safety, internet, I suppose. But yes. the individual was talking about how. Uh, the Rastafarian healer, what's his name? Le- Lucio. 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 Yeah. How, of all the characters, it's his favorite mechanically and gameplay-wise, but he was actually very disturbed by kind of the, not necessarily ethnic, but cultural portrayal of that Whoa. character. Did no, I, hang on, did I say this? No, hold on. I said the exact same. Yeah! Oh, God, Midstream. No, Midstream. No, I just, it's, I feel like with all the characters, they did, like, stereotypes of what that character yeah. would be. Oh yeah, and his, totally. And his is just, you know, is like, oh damn, it's going. Let's drop the base. He's like, damn, oh, this party's gonna be cool. Like, like, I'm like, all right, I get it. <laughs> but it just, it's, it's, yeah, it's. I feel like that's every character though. It's like, all yeah. right. So Jesse, this is where you and I again continue to become closer as one. Like, I agree with you in the sense that they're all based in stereotypes. So you kind of have to just accept that on some level. And like, we are, yeah. Yeah. we're Lucio like, was actually a Brazilian character incidentally, whereas obviously uh, yeah. Rast- Rastafarianism was developed in Jamaica. Yeah. Well, we're like, we're, we're kind of told, uh, we're, we're kind of not necessarily raised obviously, but right now we're, we're kind of, uh, constantly forced to accept that stereotypes are just inherently bad. Right. I don't necessarily agree with that statement, but that's kind of the case. Like if I, assume something off of you based off of the way you sound and dress and where you're from that's inherently evil and bad but what i kind of like about overwatch is that each character just takes those stereotypes they bucket a little bit with you know your zarya like the big strong tank female player that's not very typical do do you do you call that really um like bucking the trend though because like if they were going to make a big strong female character surely they would have made a russian you know, right. I mean, that, yeah. that was like the first they're option, not, right? Yeah. You jumped in right before it, like, because I agree with you. Yeah. And then what I think is funny about that, too, is like, typically in games, like, the female characters have very large bosoms, if we're being very, you know. And in this game, they're like, oh, no, average sized breasts. But then all the girls' asses are, like, out of this fucking planet, right? And it's like, <laughs> kind of funny. It's like, at the same time, it's like, yeah, they you're are. Not giving a nod to girls if, if they're still outrageously attractive and accentuated in one way or another. But I, I guess the, my, my overall point, my summary of this, is that Overwatch is like a very quick snap of like, here's different cultures and ethnicities kind of portrayed via stere- stereotypically, but it's more made in light and fun. And if you find A lot of them are positive stereotypes. Serious, yeah, that yeah. too is what I'm saying. That, I think that's uh, the thing with I stereotypes say- is that... Uh, sorry, uh, Dodger, go ahead. All I was going to say is I think the only one that has been so confusing for a lot of people is May. A lot of like even during I asked the stream, that yesterday. Yeah. yeah, we didn't the know. Stream, everybody was like, "Oh, she's Inuit, right? She's Inuit." I mean, but we assumed that Chinese. based on her kit, right? Right. It's like, oh, she's she's uh, she does the freezing thing, so surely she's an Inuit. Yeah, which isn't true she's... at all. Actually, she's Chinese, and it's weird because yeah, she's Chinese, and they didn't like in in the way that they sort of took everybody else to extremes. They didn't make her look. Mm. Chinese, I don't mm. think at all in her features or, no. but like some people are saying, well, she's reflective of a certain like area of China, and I'm like, ah, right. sure, that's fine. Also, she's but, a like, climatologist. She doesn't... That's put it together for me. So she's like, I'm stopping global warming with ice. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. 
We're gonna... <laughs> All right, girl. Do it. All right, that's cool. You do you, girl. That's I... cool. What? I... Oh, what are you I... doing? Uh... <sighs> What's happening? <sighs> oh, did the stream go down? Anyway. Anyway, go on. I don't know what's happening. No, no, just just the level of conversation. To, uh, God, guys have so much history. It's hard to keep up with it all. Oh, it's I just made a I just made a joke off of the word cool. And yeah, oh, word yeah. Cool. Can you keep that... keep it to rusty trombone so that I can be on okay, that level? I'm sorry. Absolutely. Thank I'll, you. I'll, all right, I'll, I'll keep yeah. it right. contained on just butthole jokes if, for the yeah. rest. If you want to do Cleveland podcast. steamers, that's fine with me as well. Pearl necklaces, like just get it as deviant as possible, and then I'll be there. Oh, just right. make sure it's after the Twitch stream. That would be good. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's going to kind of come back to the point that I was making. It's uh, as you were saying. I think for a long time we've had the idea that stereotypes uh, are bad in all. Sort of, it's, it's the same thing with like tropes are bad. You know, is what we've heard over the last few years, which is of course bullshit because you can't write anything without using tropes. You know, there's a reason yeah. that tropes exist in all forms of media. Uh, there are only so many ways to tell a story. Tropes are not inherently exactly. bad. Stereotypes are not inherently bad or good. But uh, in in this case, I think, yeah, you have a, a lot of really positive portrayals of a lot of different cultures, yes. a lot of different uh, ethnicities and all that sort of thing in Overwatch that are bright and colorful and over the top and larger than life and bombastic. And honestly, I, that's that's totally fine. I think I mean, Lucio yes. is actually, strangely enough, the same what uh, the same guy who I uh, he was the, he was the one character on the roster who I'm like, really? Yeah, <laughs> like it, you know, it, it, he he definitely I like, came across maybe as more stereotypical than right. anybody else. Total biscuit, on the roster. Not want black people. Har, <laughs> har, har. I mean, that's what I heard. That's what Sent. I. That's all right. Yeah, that's yeah. what I heard. I, got, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, that makes sense because you're a racist. But yes. uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, what else I would I be? I, I agree. I'm a white that. male, aged well, eighteen to thirty-five. We don't have a soul. Um, <laughs> I I. I really like that it it's a fine line to walk, right? Because there are stereotypes that are not okay, and I think we can all accept that. And that's what that's the part sure. that I like about this is that for the most part, Overwatch was very well received in that regard. Like people are like, oh yeah, stereotypes, so they're kind of pseudo bucking the trend a few times in the, here and there. But for, for the most part, you have to time time. you have to kind of work hard to be offended by Overwatch, and I like that they really they do. do that because the alternative too, and this is something that not a lot of people talk about, but like we come from a background in you know the mid before video games really where it was like everything was homogenized it was colorless it, it did not have multiple cultures and now there's a really strong thrust to have like every culture every race every gender and everything and that's okay i think that's better than what we had for sure but at the same time if you're fighting for like do not over portray the russian character it's like well hey i mean you kind of have to otherwise then also you're you know you're like whitewashing culture as well you're like here's a a black guy but but hang on he doesn't like stereotypical x he actually prefers anti-stereotypical y hmm well then look at that he's multifaceted the, 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 i think the weird where... thing about that is that if you do that isn't that actually more racist than not because That's what you're what saying, saying is yeah. he bucks the trend all the other guys they like that stuff it's like whoa 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 hang on hang on you know that's not necessarily yeah. true at all so well, it seems they, to me they... like embracing those uh, uh the kind of stereotypes in that case is actually a good thing they yeah. tried to create characters that are like, like aren't necessarily representative of said culture, but are things that, like people can can be like I don't want to say comfortable with, but it's one of those things where it's like, people are like oh I get that guy because like okay that's cool like this is his jam that's that's what this guy does or that's what this girl does and it's re it's quickly relatable and it's something that people understand and a lot of the times that is kind of stereotypes like that's why they exist like yeah. oh. I understand that about that person because that is a stereotype that exists. And that's just that's like just the way it is. And it's an easy way to create a character that everyone across the board can be like, oh, that dude's cool. I get that dude. Yep. Like, all right, cool. I agree. Yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> Overwatch-wise, I've actually fallen off playing it even just a little bit just because I don't know if, if you guys have the same experience, but for me, like, I really enjoy a game that kind of tracks your progress in on on most levels. Ah, certainly yeah. competitive, so I like I like to know that thirty is my highest kill streak, and I'm reaching for that. I like to know my win loss, my kill death assist ratio, that kind of mm. stuff. And well, I mean, right you have now, all that information at the end of the game. It's just I don't think you can dude, access it anywhere it resets, else. It resets every time you 
you turn off and turn back on. Like it just I, shows you the average. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, you, the co- come back in. The career information isn't persistent through sessions. Uh, it do is. Not so. Is it uh, the average? I think it is. Well, then what are you saying? I'm confused. It's just the average. It's just the, the like the average of everything you do. That average. Yeah, because they the give you the career percent. average at the end of every match after they do the voting. I think, or is it before the voting? One way or the other, and you it's can see it's like you have beat your career best, and all I can think on this character doing this specific that, thing. But I don't know. I, I've I've been playing quite a few times. It's 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 interesting. Like I will have is a it just broken kill or? win. And then if I log in next time, I'll get a 15 kill win. And it says that's your career best on the same Interesting. character. Huh. So I don't know if that's yeah. if that's Maybe by it's not map, working that's yet, by, or if it's not working. I don't know. But Here. for me, that's not interesting. That that kind of kills my my interest in playing the game in the beta in its current form. But also, even in game, and this is something Day Nine talks a lot about too with Overwatch. It's like um, the game itself. It's kind of here's the storm friendly in the sense that like at the end of it, yeah. It'll tell you you got the highest kills or something like that, but nobody has any idea if they were second, third, or whatever, or if they had a high kill game, if someone didn't get it. Maybe it'll award them not for their kills, but for something else. So it's it's really hard to know where you're at in the game, and then even uh, over a long period of time where you're at in the game. So when I play, if I'm with friends, like, you know, if I'm stacked with friends, the social event of that game is really fun, and it's so light and cool that it's like... We're all laughing, we're having a good time, and then time Unless we're like, playing oh, with shit, Dodger, in which case we're super serious and very miserable. Super well, she's serious. laughing, though. See, yes. now there's that mix. She's she laughing. But, but I don't like... What keeps me coming back to CSGO is I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm Legendary Eagle Master. I'm building on something. I'm, I'm working on numbers here. Whereas super Dodger, Sergeant, Sergeant Superperson. They don't have that, not yet. They don't have that yet. It's 2016. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the, that's the next update. I get that. I okay. just... I don't know. TV. I am on the opposite end. I like that it isn't too, like, I know that I am 36 and 1 and the best player on this team. Like, mm-hmm. I'm cool with, with, like, you know what? You got 6% of that kill. Congratulations. You shot that guy once. You, you contributed. I the, like el- the eliminations you thing is a no, bit no, weird. They give you an assist if you're healing the guy that kills yeah. the guy. Well, yeah, I, I mean, love, that's I fair, that. right? If, it's not what? like I can shoot him if I'm Mercy. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I mean, no, because, you... like, the the way that you determine whether or not you, like, got that that determining shot is final blows, right? Like, that's kind yes. of how I've looked at it, is, like, here's yeah. how many people you eliminated along with everybody else, but here's, here's like, the people that you got, like, that last definitive uh-huh. shot on. Well, also, every kill tells you exactly how much you contributed by the number yep. that's next to it. Like, if you, if you yeah. killed somebody, it will say you killed them and then uh, give the number 100. It's like you, you took 100% of their health off. You were the guy that did that. Um, the, the, yeah. the weird thing is, like, that knowing whether or not you're first, second, and third on the team, etc., you do know that, but only at the end of the game. It will say, and it will give you those little awards at the end, on mm-hmm. either that first screen or the second where it's like but, eliminations then it'll give you the gold silver or bronze medal next to it but it's but not have it's not like on on <clears throat> and i think this is them trying to figure out a, a different way to do it so that they're not copying too much of like the team fortress format but you're not able to look at a list and see in general where am i like how well did i do like, yeah, yeah at, the, at prob- the end, you can say, oh, I got the most eliminations out of everybody. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you did the best overall right. amongst well, no. the group. The best, very- can, the, the best <clears throat> thing you can do is tab and see that someone on the other team is on fire. And when they're on yeah. fire, you're like, OK, that person's kicking ass. We're like, going to do something about that. But that's literally the only thing you can see. It's, yep. you know, and, and I- that's OK. I'm not trying to say it's the worst. I'm saying personally, from my experience not knowing where I'm at the entire time I'm playing, except for little nods to, like, you're generally doing these things okay, is not enough to keep me engaged in the game for a long period of time. And I challenge you guys, even even Jesse, who, again, I'm more towards the competitive, sure, so of course it's very obvious that I, I err on that side, but even for the more casual individuals, like, do you see yourself playing this over a long period of time as is, not ever knowing where you're in in a team format? Like, just like, am I really good? Are we good? Did well, I've said, this this in the, I've said this in the past. Like one of the biggest concerns I have is just judging off of watching people play the way the beta's gone so far. Unless Blizz like adds more to the game that exists, it's one of those things where by the time it releases, like how many people playing right now are going to be like, "Yeah, no, I'm super excited for that release day." Right? Like it's a weird. Mm-hmm. I don't know because I feel like there's a lot of hype for it, but the hype it, you can definitely see it's slowly dying down. 
And it's one of those things like, can they re-engage that by spring 2016 or whenever the hell this thing comes out? Yeah. So, well, I mean, they need, they need something in that regard. Like, you know, yeah. I, I have no issue with them putting a ranked mode in. I certainly have no issue with even like adding a kill feed. Uh, this discussion keeps coming up on, uh, I know they're starting to do Overwatch <clears throat> podcasts now. I've been listening to a few of them. The kill feed thing is an interesting argument i'm okay with the kill feed i think that not only does the kill feed give you that little bit of recognition when you kill somebody but it also gives team-wide information if i see four guys go down right. to an time ulti to i know that's time to push right. uh, so that's actually useful team information what i don't want is a leaderboard on tab i don't want that the reason i don't want that is that this game is based around pushing cart that is what game is about. Stop cart push or push cart. That, that is the only fucking is. thing that matters. Or the only the thing. Well, there's but capture th zone ones too. So yeah, but a lot of times you're throwing, your, especially some good games, like if you're using a real strategy, sometimes going tracer and getting behind them and being a dick and then dying so your team can keep pushing is like the best strategy yeah, and I mean, that's just... all I do with Winston. It's like, uh, yeah. my, my argument is, if I can engage and distract two or more people in the back, and, you know, if I can kill one of them, great. But if not, if I can keep them away from attacking my team, then my team has a 5 on 4 advantage and is probably yeah. pushing cart. So that's right. fine. But here's the thing. Having that leaderboard does not contribute to encouraging people to use those strategies. It actually does the opposite. Because then you've got, oh, that Winston is zero ten. 10 What a shitter. I, why am I in this game with this fucking idiot, etc., oh, no, etc.? No, in Dota, well, they have those numbers, and that's not how it is, right? I th there's, I think there's defined roles. There are, yeah, there are defined roles, but I think that in Overwatch, while there are like defense, offense, tank, etc., that the things are really, really mixed. Like Winston is a tank. But really, he's more of a disrupt in the backline and be a pain in the ass kind of guy. Reinhardt is a pure fucking tank. And then you've got guys who... Uh, Symmetra, for instance. Symmetra is in the support character, but can't even heal. Yeah. I, I, I think you make a fair point. I, I don't necessarily need a leaderboard. I don't need to know my exact KDA. Those are just examples of what keeps me interested. But I do think, and I think people would generally agree with this, across the board there should be more information. I feel like they are fighting uh, an interesting battle where they don't want someone to know that they're the worst in this game but it is still a game that is naturally well, getting competitive because it's a objective Well, I mean, game. there are already yeah, and... stats available in-game when you hit tab if you look to the bottom. You can see your own KD. The people that say you can't see your KD are wrong. You can. It's right down the bottom yeah, under I, tab. I hit tab a lot, even yeah, though there's it's right not there. that much now, to see there. I'm just, I'm not saying, I'm, you're, I, I don't know if you're arguing for status quo and I'm arguing for more or if you're just making a point, but my, my point is more information is better for that game, I think. Yeah, well, I, 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 personal information, I agree with comparative information during game i don't agree with i think it needs to avoid being and and, and you know sorry star wars battlefront but i'm gonna hit on you again <laughs> uh or, or shit on you whatever i did hit on you they deserve it hey. 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 um there's that rusty trombone again. Go that, yeah, that frostbite uh, engine but like the perfect example uh is when you play some of the battlefront maps and there Walker are objectives assault. in those maps <laughs> and those maps have objective objectives people are so concerned about getting kills that for example rebels on hoth because that's one everyone seems to know yeah are awful like they're horrible when it's really easy to win it's really easy to win if you just work together but people are so busy like i'm gonna hide in this corner and snipe the entire damn battle you're not helping anyone you look great dude you are 36 and oh god i hope your dick grows really really big because of it yeah but you but that, 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 that ATAT is at 100% HP, of so it doesn't fucking matter that you're facing. Battlefront is the exact opposite problem. Battlefront, if anything, is a pure case study to say why you shouldn't have that information right. team wide. Because like in, in Battlefront in particular, as I it, 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 Hoth is a great example. Rebels always die more than Imperials on almost all of the Walker Assault maps because the game is designed that way. The problem is they show you that, so you know. Me being, uh, you know, having a negative KD is not because I suck, it's because I'm on the rebel side. Of course I have a negative KD. You know, I'm getting fucking rained on by all the shit that the fucking Imperials can throw at the rebel side. And on honestly, like, you know, the best thing you can do in that game is get on the fucking point and die as hard as you can. But as long as you keep taking that point, you're going to win the game. But the, the thing is that, you know, Battlefront doesn't, its scoreboard doesn't represent that. Because it just has this general score number that could mean fucking anything. If you're 30 and 2, that could just mean that you got the Boba Fett power up. That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. 
It's yeah, and I feel like that's that's the exact opposite. There there needs to be a happy middle. I think there are good enough people working on Overwatch that they can come up with stuff that'll make everyone happy without losing what I think is the fundamental point of that and Heroes, for example, which is, you know what? Everyone on this team can contribute in their own way, and we're not going to, like, this guy died a bunch, but we're not going to show that off. We're going to say, like, this guy's death helped kill a bunch of other people. So that's if I have how a do you represent that though? That's that's yeah. the difficult point. Like you can homog. I know a lot of games try to just homogenize it into score and just use uh, this general kind of score number. But then how do you balance that score? Is it a case that one character who's super useful somehow can't generate as much score as another character? Again, do I get score for disrupting in the backline as a tracer or as a Winston? Do I? Yeah. I don't know. Is the Reinhardt the top of the leaderboard every time because he's standing in front of the? Uh, the cart with the shield consistently he gets that a lot Fourteen thousand damage absorbed like, which yay. is a great number the question is though like it, it doesn't necessarily represent uh, what what damage did you absorb exactly you know d was it critical damage uh, did you how many ultimates did you eat for instance how many high noons did you block how many death justice rains from above did you block <laughs> you know that that's the kind of wow. information that i think you need there I can feel your hatred for Farah. Oh, fuck the Farah, man. Mean, I play Roadhog just to hook her out of the sky. <laughs> Justice reigns for bleh, is the noise that's that I like to hear when I hook her in and fucking <laughs> shotgun melee combo Justice at the death. From, ah! That's yeah. me. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I, yeah, I think yeah, you're right though. There has to be a there has to be a happy medium somewhere. Yes. Blizzard will figure it out. That's like, look, they pay people to do that. It ain't our job. Figure it out, Blizz. Oh, okay. it's our job to yap about it. Yeah. <laughs> when I don't know the answer, I just say, figure it out, Blizz. That's usually how this ends. Yeah. Yeah. Figure yeah. it out, Blizz. Yeah. But to answer your question that you asked earlier, Jeff, uh, would I you know, keep playing it? I mean, I played like 45 hours of the game so far, and I'm definitely not sick of it. I, I mm -hmm. enjoy the process. I enjoy trying out new characters, figuring out the best way that they fit into a composition. I do enjoy the team play quite a lot. And I'm, I don't really have to worry so much about my KD. I think that, you know, it's... We, we get into the toxicity argument, but I mean, God, if you compare Battlefront to Overwatch, maybe it's just because everyone's in Battlefront and nobody's in Overwatch, so... I've barely run into shitty people in Overwatch, yeah. and I know that that's but because it is a limited, I wasn't it's a limited around beta, for, the, though. for the beta We had, we had a guy either. yesterday who was... Uh, it happens sometimes. <laughs> but in Battlefront, <laughs> people are so shitty good. constantly. Just the shittiest. All the time. That'll, ha that'll happen the to best. you. I, Wait, my favorite who's... so far is day one of Overwatch beta... JP and I hopped in a team. <laughs> we played against a team where the guy's name was Mr. Nig 2000. Oh my Jeez. god. Day one Overwatch invite. We were like, How did that happen? <laughs> Who's friends or family? Like, <laughs> that's his like, account name. Fucking, like, that's his which account name. Yes. That's like, what? <laughs> what Blizzard? That's actually his like... surname. I'll yeah. have you know. And he can't do anything about that. And you should accept okay. it. Okay. Yeah. Even um, if that's your surname, then your alias online is not your surname. If that's fair point. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much every time Jesse and I play together, one of us winds up trolling people who are complaining. <laughs> Good. Chat. Oh my god, it's so like, fun. There's always going to be somebody who's like, oh, this character's such bullshit, I hate that. And one of us will be like, this guy, then switch, get good then. scrub. Oh, dude, pick a different <laughs> one. I love it. <laughs> I played a game as Bastion and just kept killing this guy. And he finally got to me and then would not leave me alone. He kept hunting me down. And at the end, he's like, suck it, bitch. Take that Bastion. I was like, salty. <sighs> You're so salty. To be he fair, like, no, he, he did the I right thing. You. Rather yeah, than complaining, oh. oh my god, Bastion's OP. He's like, all right, I picked the character which can hunt Bastion down and my and job all game was hunting Bastion. His, at the end he did like his whole like rant about how he was like I oh, okay. got you motherfucker and I was like super salty. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was, I was, it was so much fun. The other night I was playing Symmetra and there was this guy who was like god they really need to nerf those turrets that Symmetra has. They are are just you fucking kidding control. me? They're weak as shit. Yeah, and everybody was like, what the fuck are you talking about? They take yeah. like one shot to destroy oh, and he was god. like yeah. no. Her 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 stuff is gonna totally break this game. You'll see once it launches. Yeah, it's, really? Okay, it's sure. Break everything. It, although, <laughs> we with that like... said, universally everyone's like, "Fuck Genji!" <laughs> like it doesn't matter who you are. Just like I have no problem character. with Genji. I play Winston. I murder that fucker. I don't That's care. The, the problem is ninety nine percent of the time, 
people who play Genji are awful at Genji. And then you get mm-hmm. that one dude who's who just great. wins the game for the, the entire team. You're like, I want to just I want to find that guy and put him has, in the face. He has a fairly life. high skill ceiling like, compared to a lot of the other characters. Yeah, so yeah. when you're good with Genji, you can be really fun. It's the same with Tracer. A really good Tracer is the most annoying fucking thing in the universe. Oh, yeah. You guys, I maybe we're just telling the wrong stories, but if, if this is the the toxicity... Oh, it's not brace, zero brace toxicity. yourself. No, no, no. no, no. Like, just, I'm just saying. Here's toxicity to me in a team-based FPS-like game. It's where like, hey, guys, how are we doing? Hey, good, good. I'm playing so-and-so. Okay, cool. We're going to do this. And then one guy's like, all right, well, I'm Reinhardt. And someone's like, hey, actually, I'm Reinhardt. Is that okay? He's like, no, it's not fucking okay. And guess what? I'm AFK in the corner, you jabroni. I'm going to fucking type to them the entire time what you guys are doing. And you're like... You're like, well, hang on, man. This is a team game. Can't we just work this? You're like, no, I don't even fucking like your name. And then you're like, oh, well, <laughs> that's that's what's coming. Like the the people that I don't know what they do in their day job. I don't know. I don't know if they're probably normal people. And this is just they how don't they, get they don't get it. They don't get in the beta. That's what they do in their day job. They're yeah. God. So we have a few months before that. Goes it it at least helps that it's a it's a shorter game. You know, you can't ruin a game too much. That's true. Bye. Again, you use the word jabroni it. in this yeah. story, so uh, <laughs> that's true. Is the rock is the rock playing? <laughs> the rock is super into Damn it, Dwayne. Yes, Dodger. <laughs> what what were you about to say? My biggest complaint is that you wouldn't do mild mild west with us yesterday. <sighs> <laughs> that was now that was trolling. That was troll worthy. And if I was What the fucking like, four man McCree squad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then over voice chat saying, Come back here, you varmint. <laughs> So no, fun. that was awful. That was awful. Mild, be, mild west. It was it's racist so towards cowboys. Is what that was. It's so good. I love I, it. Like a four or five man team. High noon with him sounding off across uh-huh. the five characters would be so funny. It was fine. Dodger didn't know how to high noon, so she wasn't actually accomplishing anything every time she did it. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god! There were so many times where my chat was like, "That would have been play of the game if you actually if you actually knew how to waited use high, noon. high noon." I was like, properly, "Oh my god, yeah. they're all right there! High noon!" And then you just clicked, and it's like. <laughs> boop, boop. She and didn't then, wait yeah, for the skills to come up. I was up. like, oh, fuck, do I have to click? And I got yes. one person, and TV was like, you are so fucking useless. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. But you're oh, not. You got that one person. That's a great I got goal. one person. Yeah. It oh, wasn't worth it. It is wasn't it, worth it. That one so is that, really is that our that obligatory Overwatch <laughs> discussion for the day? Yes, yeah. we're done. Let's move on. All right, cool. Let's, let, let's move on to other things then. Uh has anyone else played Just Cause 3, or am I going to be alone with this one? I've played, I played I love a little bit of it. Okay. All right. Cool. What do you, I would like to know, what do, what do you reckon of Just Cause 3, Jesse? Uh, I think Just Cause 3 is mechanically super crazy and fun. I like all this wild, crazy shit you can do. Uh, but it's like the missions and like... Here's what it is. The things you want to do for fun and shits and giggles are amazing. The things the game has you do is like, meh. Like, that's, it's... Does it's that include those, it, the liberation of the outposts and bases and such? Those are, it's very repetitive. Repetitive, I think, is the key yeah. word. Like, it's, it's like a repetitive, it's a, it's a weird game. It's a game that there's so much to love, and the fact that it lets you do so much wild, crazy shit is awesome. But... At the same time, incorporated into that wild, crazy shit is some mundane, boring crap. And I think the premise is like, well, it's up to you to make it exciting. That shouldn't be the case. <laughs> that shouldn't be the case at all. And I feel like that's the conceit of this game. It's like, no, but like, think of the crazy things you could have done in this mission. <laughs> like, all right, sure. A lot of the time, it's like the, it says, yeah, you do these crazy shit, and yet that's, actually not a good way of doing anything it's the whole idea that you can tether things together and obviously like the booster rocket explosives those are the two kind of basic do crazy shit tools that you get to get any other tools you have to go through these boring fucking side missions that are dull as dishwater this is the game that has by far done the kind of kill frenzy kill spree missions the worst out of any open world game i've ever played I don't know how they fucking managed it, but it's quite literally go into an empty army base and blow up red props for a minute and a half. It's boring as fuck. It reminds me, and chat called me out on this, and they're like, you're the one who plays Far Cry 3 and 4. I will say the exact same thing about those games, where it's a game where they give you crazy things like, yeah, no, you can throw meat into this base, and tigers will come in and attack people in the base. All these crazy things you can do, where you can get in a helicopter and drop bombs on them. 
but by doing the crazy things, you're punished for it. So just stay outside the base and use a sniper rifle and kill everyone and take like two minutes longer. Yeah, it's I mean, not nearly as exciting to watch, but it gets the job done much better. And I feel like this game has a lot of that. We're like, sure, you can do some batshit crazy things, but you know, if you do it just a sneak your normal way, it's much easier. <laughs> yeah. Like, All right. It's like, well, you could attach a booster rockets to this explosive booster rockets to this Jeep and then drive it into the power transformer to blow it up. Or I can shoot an RPG at it. Oh, that's <laughs> And you have such ready access to that. It feels like if you had a lot more limitations in terms of your big like explosive weapons, then maybe you would be encouraged to do more of that stuff. But you're, you've got infinite C4 and rpgs are plentiful you can't you can carry maybe six or seven rpg shots or eight or nine grenade launcher shots but the army bases are full of weapons racks that just let you instantly replenish them so mm. you might as well in many ways just like click that and the worst thing for me as i said is the side missions to unlock the really fun shit like if i want to tether more than two things together I have to find the scrapyard challenges. I haven't found a single one of them in 15 hours of play. I don't know where the fuck they are. They they are badly hidden. And if I want, like, extra nitrous for my car, I have to go all the way through the land vehicle unlock tree in linear order. I can't pick what I want. Doing fucking races through checkpoints. Like, not even racing against other cars. Just racing through fucking checkpoints, which is boring as shit. I don't want to do any of that stuff. In order to get access... I don't mind progression, right? i great with that, but the progression has got to actually be interesting. And the progression is fucking boring in this game. Mm. Incredibly boring. Yes, Dodger. What's the difference between Just Cause and Far Cry? Because they look the There's, same to me. I mean, one's a third-person shooter and one's a first-person yeah. shooter, but they're actually they're very close similar. They're fucking water. No. <laughs> what? No, uh -huh. not at all. No, no. no Did not it? at all. No. That's it? No, no. they're... Yeah, that it's... It. Like, Far Cry They're actually is, very similar. Yeah, they're, they're very similar. Uh, it's Just Cause's conceit is it's a little more Saints Row-y in its craziness. We're like, okay. I'm going to ride on the underside of this helicopter because F it. And I'm going to shoot things while I'm doing it. It's a little wilder and, and crazier than Far Cry is. Far Cry, at some point, takes itself a little too seriously, but still is like, we're not fun. But it's like, every story's a little like, oh no, this is serious fucking business. And... Just Cause doesn't seem to do that. At least with Just Cause 3. I don't know how, um, like, serious business Far Cry is, especially with Far Cry 4. I think... Uh, it, but it's, more so. It's realized that it is it is a very silly game. Some people are like, oh, they're nothing alike. Are you kidding me? Like, they're both open-world destructathon sandbox games. One just happens to be an FPS and one is a third-person shooter. They're actually very similar frankly, in terms of things like how you take out the outposts and taking over territory control and how you do your unlocks and all that sort of thing. They're, they're pretty damn similar. It's just that Just Cause does have a, you know, it has the tether and the, the hijacking and all that sort of thing. I mean, that's the big difference really between the two is, is the tether and what you can do with that. And that the will tether, change like, the flow opens of the up a whole new, like, it makes It opens up a ton of fun stuff you can do. It's just it's not necessary, like, except for a few times where it's like, you must do this in order to, like, accomplish the mission. Most of the time, it's like the tether is like a fun extra way of doing crazy shit. I don't know. I disagree. I think if you're not using the tether all the fucking time, then you're probably not doing it right because you can move so quickly with it. And honestly, mo getting moving to anywhere without using the, the combination of the tether, the wingsuit, and the parachute is a fucking nightmare because you move really slowly. So why would that, you do that? That is true. But one of the things the game specifically tries to point out is that it's like if you stay on the ground you're gonna get your ass shut up so it's best to be in the air or on the True. walls or flying around and for a while i was like oh yeah no okay cool that's what i'm gonna try and do and eventually it just wasn't like like i eventually had so much shit that it, it isn't like it, it you can just stay on the ground and shoot guys and it's not a big deal and i don't know i mean not when the tanks come along you know if you if you can't get out of those tank blast radiuses you're gonna get killed well then you jump you jump off a wall real quick and move it's assuming there's a wall there or you just keep tethering around the place it's yeah. i mean that's how i that's how i found it was easiest to play anyway like the tether is almost god mode while you're tethering around you are not getting hit uh, it's a it, great it, way like you've taken damage you regenerate health by just tethering to somewhere else by the time that you get there your health's already regened and you're ready to go again hmm. and it's it just cause kind of suffers from i suppose i think it's actually due to the the five years between just cause two and just cause three just Cause 3, to me, is not a big advancement to Just Cause 2. When Just Cause 2 came out, it was probably the craziest, most chaotic sandbox open-world game that there was. Like, by a country mile. 
But since then, we've had shitloads of a other lot games. Of those. You know, yeah. a lot <laughs> of those. You know, and like as, as Just Cause Three sort of came along and said, "Well, you know, I've I've kind of already played this like a bunch of times, even this year. These all of these open world games have focused on." taking over outposts, taking over territory, big physics-based chaotic destruction. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of games have kind of done that. And and as a result, the only big open world game that I found to be very different has probably been uh, Shadow of Mordor because of the Nemesis system. That that was so innovative that it really, it took what was otherwise a pretty run-of-the-mill open world game and turned it into something different. Well, it was so innovative that they took that concept and made an entire game out of it. Pretty much. Because that's all you do in that game. <laughs> yeah, it, it actually is. Once once you eventually get it, it takes a while to Which, by the way, I'm not totally it. hating it. It's a cool concept, and I agree with you. It's awesome implementation, but then they just, like, they're like, this is such a fucking cool idea. We thought up other ideas, but we're like, no, let's just keep yeah, doing this the main, over The main and over. story in that game is pretty weak, but yeah. the, the, the premise that the second-to-last battle in the game, even though the last battle is just QT, but the second-to-last battle is legit DLC, like, but... I'm going to fight my nemesis, this asshole who I've killed like three other times but now he's back again and he's got scars and shit and he's like i'm gonna finish this it's a really cool moment and so you can't like yeah. hate on it but you're absolutely right that, that that's all that game became was yeah. just that it, for me it was all those little stories of this guy has been the pain in my ass for the last five hours you know i keep running into him at the most inopportune moments and he keeps getting more uh, stronger and it, it, that's about like your own little stories i guess and yep. i think uh, g- games like just cause 3 are also at their best when you have those little stories so like right. yeah i did this and then this happened and it was crazy but a lot of what happens in just cause 3 is kind of going through the motions you know taking over outposts is literally a checklist of blow up all of these red objects over and over and over and over again and that gets pretty damn samey pretty damn quickly to me mm-hmm. oh, samey yeah it's oh, samey <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I think just open world games have got super formulaic over the past couple of years. Uh, let's talk about this, too, if we talk about Fallout 4, because I have a similar complaint, actually. We we, we absolutely could. Uh, do we want to move on to Fallout 4? Or are we done on Just Cause 3? Any last comments on what, that? What, what about Fallout 4, since that's super topical right now? <laughs> <laughs> All right, what we're about, going on to Fallout 4. Here we go. Yeah, we'll go ahead. I still haven't played any more of it, so I'm not going to contribute to this at all. Go, Jeff. I so let me just start off by saying I'm playing the Xbox One and I thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, all the bugs are there, sure. I last night was taking an elevator and the, and the Xbox just started <laughs> and like just shut down. I'm like okay, fine, but it saves so often that it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, I think it's gorgeous. It's obviously not far off beyond what it was, which is fine by me. It's it's not it's not even Tomb Raider level gorgeousness, but it's just it's good enough. It, it's a very attractive, fun game. I like how much different things you can do in it. I think that's fucking incredible, and I think that's what you should get from a Fallout game. Um, Some people are going ham on the building stuff, the different companions you can get, the different specializations you can do. There is enough weapon diversity. You can craft with them. Like All of that has kept me completely engaged. Uh, And I like, too, that it doesn't force you too much. There are a couple missions where it's like, build a settlement, so I had to do a little bit of the building stuff, but I'm not building cities. You're you're never going to hear that from me, where I take a picture of my screen... And there's the fucking Tower of Jeff, and I'm sitting at the top of it or something like that. That's never going to happen. I don't do that. Zero um, commitment. No, not not to the building. So uh, what if they had the really, KD ratio at the top? Still wouldn't do it. <laughs> still wouldn't do it, Jesse. If they counted how many buildings I built, wouldn't do it. And then but killed them? It's, I'm now at hour like 20, and um, I'm playing mostly side quests. I've done two or three of the, the primary mission, which are really nice. There's a lot of cool little in-game graphical cutscene type stuff with that. The story is much more developed and the side missions though is where the real gem is for me in the fallout games uh at least i'm speaking specifically to fallout 3 new vegas and now 4 um they tend to be very very stylistic to who you're asking which is of course predictable but at some point it gets a little bit ridiculous like if you're doing the minutemen side quests the first couple times he's like so and so need help help them out clear the ghouls and we'll set up a settlement i'm like okay cool i'm on like mission 12 15 or 20 with him and every fucking time, this guy, I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, yeah, so-and-so's got... I'm like, Sh- no, not again. And he's like, yeah, so-and-so's got raiders over there. Aren't the Minutemen literally the infinite quests from Skyrim? Like, I think, wasn't that the point of the Minutemen? That those quests never might actually be. end? They might be. So my point, though, on that is not that I need a conclusion. It's just that 
it tends to be that they will tell you to do only specific things or, or only that thing, right? So it's not just the Minutemen, but that is, although, the major bite of my criticism. I'm also joining the Brotherhood of Legion because I'm a slut, and that's what I do. And <laughs> uh, they, too, are, like, the missions are very go here, clear out, kill, and you become more of us and, and, and that kind of thing. And, and there's more of this kind of stuff in the game. It's not so bad. This is not a primary concern, and this is I'm going to still put 100 hour, hours in this game easy peasy and enjoy every bit of it. Every night I've just been sitting, dogs pile on me, and I, for four hours, have a really good time playing this game. But um, it just along the lines of what you were saying, with like open world games and how they tend to get a little bit formulaic in the sense of like, go take over this camp, go kill these people, win prize. I think this game falls into that category too a little bit. But again, for the people that have put 500 hours into this because they are in the chat, I'm sure this game destroys the others in the sense that I'm going to go flip over a school bus. There's going to be a family of can cantipid monster men underneath it. I'm going to befriend them. We're going to ride a balloon around the world, and we're going to paint pictures. Like, I'm sure that's in the game. It'll, it'll happen. <laughs> End scene. And. I will eventually get around to it. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I play, again, I played a few hours and just like was so put off by the uh, the interface that I kind of never went back to it. But I think you know December when I've got a bit more time, things I, it's competing right now with me actually playing The Witcher Three, which mm -hmm. I have not done yet. I want to point out, and it just seems to me that since I've not had time, I really haven't had time to play like a lot of Metal Gear Solid Five or any of these. There's been a lot of big games this year that consume yeah. your fucking time in a huge way, and I haven't really had time to play any of them properly. So I'm just like, which of these big games am I going to maybe dedicate December to? You know, the quiet time when there aren't that many game yeah. releases. And I'm trying to think of which one. I, I vote this one. But like, just last night, I'm sitting there. Anna's passed out because she can't stay away for more than 10 minutes watching the game. Because that's her own, her own struggle. Uh, <laughs> but I like, I'm like doing a mission where it's on the map. I'm supposed to walk to this thing. And I walk past this, like, it's like, you found Swan. And I'm like, what the fuck is Swan? This gigantic, like, screen-sized monster comes out of a pond, picks up a boulder, and throws it at me. And I'm like, Jesus, what the fuck? And I, like, duck around a corner. I've recently acquired the ability to throw artillery grenades at people, which is where I throw a smoke grenade at them. And then my friends at a camp somewhere else on the map, crazy far away, start launching artillery on them. So I feel like I'm utilizing really cool game mechanics I toss a smoke grenade. I'm sitting there snickering, like looking around the corner. The first artillery <laughs> hits the car that I'm hiding behind. Nuclear explosion goes off, and I get splattered across the entire battle sphere. It was, and that was it was awesome. I loved it. Yeah, that's a game that. Speaking of games that had a lot of hype, and then now I don't hear anybody talking about them. Fallout Four is one of those for sure. Well, the like think about what games. I mean, there's like a game cacophony going on right now like there's a huge two games every week or whatever it's hard for any of these to maintain hype for too long i feel like yeah it's like crazy if you want to uh play a, a, a good rpg and you want to do it for free and you want to suffer through owning origin right now <laughs> jade empire jade empire is free on origin so uh that's a fantastic game if you never got to play that on xbox the original xbox way back in the day that is legit that was a legit good game. So, mm. Jade Empire, go find that thing. Mm. Jade, Jade Empire is great. Mm -hmm. Not too often you get like a kung fu epic RPG. It was great. It was really cool. Yeah, it was a good game. Done in the styles of, of Star Wars. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic kind of deal. Yeah, oh, I, do, I do like Jade Empire quite a lot. I, I don't know how well it runs on modern systems. I should probably yeah. try oh, it again, Oh, I have though. no clue. I have no clue. But it's free, so... Fair point. You know, yeah. Besides free giving EA your email, what do you got to lose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're like, so owning cool. Origin is too high a price. <laughs> like, oh, please. It's a fucking program. Hey, let me, let me tell you my EA uh, customer service experience. Yeah, I was uh, going to say, you were, like, actually pretty happy with them, weren't you? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, so what happened was I logged in to find that my loadouts in Battlefront had been renamed to Russian. <laughs> and that I had apparently a couple of extra ranks. So thanks, Russian guy. You uh, saved me a little bit of time there. So I was like, ah, oh, shit. You know, my Origin account's obviously been compromised. So I went to change my password. And it's like, enter your secret question. Uh, answer your secret question. The secret question is like, ASD, ASD, ASD. And I'm like, oh, shit. 
Uh, so, okay. Uh, so I, I put in a, an email to their customer service team, like uh, issued a ticket. Ten minutes later, they call my phone with a real person, and they sort the problem out within wow. five minutes. Five minutes straight up. They're just like, they ask for some information. They confirm. It's like, right, do you still have access to your email account? Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to send you an email. I uh, click this, put the verification code in. Then we're going to have to ask you some, a couple of questions to confirm your identity, wow. blah, blah, blah. Did that, sorted. And then they're like, yeah, so we just implemented two factor authentication. So, you know, maybe you might want to implement that. Do you want me to set that up for you? And I'm like, uh, sure. Yeah, great. Mm. Uh, so it was all sorted out in about five minutes. Uh, some uh, lovely, I think it was a Scottish lady, sorted it out. And I have two th- two factor authentication on my Origin account now, and it's great. Whereas my UPlay account has been compromised on no less than four separate occasions because it has no two factor authentication. I have no idea how Russians keep getting into it. I don't have a <laughs> fucking clue, but they do, and th- that's damn infuriating. But co- sorry, yeah, compared but sorry, to yeah. Steam support, EA shits all over them. They they yeah, really do. They they're way way better than anything Valve has ever done. So I don't know why people are so uppity about origin but it's just well, another program that you don't have to have loaded all the time to so be fair jesse and i had plenty of problems oh with dead space i do remember back that yeah, in the day true. yeah and it did not get sorted out for months months <laughs> yeah. yeah it was a persistent <laughs> like, problem and every time we'd ask for help they'd be like we don't know what's wrong with it or like yeah, maybe we're it's not really uh, sure what's going have on, you tried but... uninstalling it so it's <laughs> nice to know that it's nice to know that something has improved there, but that was yeah. one of the worst experiences I've ever had with customer service. It's and amazing. that lasted weeks. Ugh. It, it, it's amazing what customer service can do to your life, though. Like, I know the feels of both y'all. I got it in the exact same experience. So someone's tried to steal my identity with my debit card. They went to a Target up in Washington, tried to spend $810, my bank, for whatever reason. And I travel everywhere and use my card everywhere. They were like, nope, that's not you. Shut it down. But then they didn't call me, so I just go to like I'm I'm having like a, a movie date with my wife Anna. And I'm like and I'm like yeah, put it all on the card, please. And, and you know just standing there, and they're like, sir, the card has declined. And I'm Fine. like, uh, uh, you know, because back in college that used to happen all the fucking time. It was horrifically embarrassing. Whatever. This time it's not. But then I was worried that they took all my money. Long story short, I call up my bank, and I'm like, hey, I need you know I need you to, I need I need a new pin number because they sent me a new card and they didn't ask for the pin number to be registered into it. They're like, I'm third. We cannot do that. You need to come to a bank chain. I'm like, I'm in California. You can see that. You're in Oregon and Washington. I can't do that. And they're like, okay. Uh, there's nothing we can do. Really? And I'm like, whoa. And like back and forth yelling. Not, not a lot of yelling, but got pretty mad. Talk to their manager. Manager comes on the phone, hangs up on me. Oh, like you've never seen the rage that can come from me in that case. I didn't want to deal with that day. I call back the next day. Immediately just ask for another manager. This manager sorted me out in two and a half minutes and was super nice about it the entire time. And it was like, I, I didn't even have any leftover rage. I was just completely drained and I was happy and fine and great. I felt good. Like afterwards, I was like, that felt really nice. Like customer service is so fucking important, not I, just to the consumer, but to the business. It's incredible. Major life hack here, people. I consistently, if I ever hit a customer service person who's like, I can't help you, I can't do that. I will call back immediately after I'm done with that conversation and be like, yeah, I got disconnected from the last representative, and this is all I wanted. And 90% of the time, the next person you get will be like, oh, that's easy. Sure, I'll do that. Hmm. I can't tell you why. It just always is. There's always, of course they can do it. There's always just that one guy who's like, that's a lot. Just doesn't want to. It's like, oh, I'm off for my shift for five minutes. This is going to take 10. I don't want to fucking do it. So just, yeah, yeah, once once you get done with that person, just call back immediately. You'll get someone else and then be like, I got disconnected and he was going to fix this for me. And they're like, oh, okay, sure. And they just immediately do it. It's super easy. Like, all right, great. In general, yes. The bank has like an automated phone thing and then you have to answer all these security questions. Otherwise, I'm just stealing money from a random guy. So that was super. That's why. I called the next day. I was like, I'm not doing this again. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the, it's the same reason why I keep ordering flowers from From You Flowers, despite or For You Flowers, because they, they, they fuck up every time. Every time. <laughs> Consistently. Every fucking time. But every time I also then get credit on my account because they fucked up, so my next flowers are cheaper. And then they fuck it up again. And of course, the lovely person at customer service is really apologetic. It's like... Oh yeah, you know, we, we're sorry we couldn't get it this day. Like, we're gonna upgrade the order. We're gonna give you some credit on your account. I was like, you like you suck, but your customer <laughs> service 
doesn't. Like, your company <laughs> is awful at doing what it's supposed to do. You never get the flowers there on time, ever. I don't think a single time have you ever delivered it on the day that you said you would. And yet, simultaneously, <laughs> they always, always say, oh, we're really sorry. That's Games Workshop, too, sometimes. Like, we, I remember even, it happened more as a kid, but we'd, I'd, I'd get home. I've been saving for a month for this model. I open it up, and like half its body's just, just flat out not on the sprue, just gone. Yeah. And it's just devastating. But you call them, and they're like, oh, shit, yeah, we'll send you. Well, next day, right now, a whole new one. And it's like, don't you want That's proof? Awesome. And they're like, no, no, yeah, you you know, we trust you. You're, you. You play Warhammer. Of course you're a good person. It's like, here you go. It's like, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah whenever a company is like, oh, there's a defect. No, we don't need a picture. We'll just send you a new one. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what if the homeless people system... find out about this? <laughs> How does that system work? Uh, a lot of the time, it, this is like Amazon as well, will I say, oh, your delivery didn't arrive or whatever. We're, just, we're not going to, you know, we don't need any proof of that. We're just going to send you another one. They just sort of mark your account. And if people do it multiple times, you know, they, they give you the benefit of the doubt, like the first couple of times. And then they're like, are you sure about that? We probably need to see some proof. I imagine it's just more efficient. You know, they get through their tickets quicker. Yes. It's not worth the hassle, you know, Absolutely. when you're a company of that size. Yes, that's true. To do all that shit, you know, because like sending it back means that someone physically has to restock the item. They probably have to go through an RMA yep. process to send it back to the manufacturer. It's probably not worth the fucking hassle, you know? 100%. I imagine yeah, that's got a lot to do with it. And the angst you'll get from the consumer, because it's like, maybe it's not your fault directly as the merchandise seller, but maybe it's the shipping process. Like, the guy just fucking left on the front door and someone took it, right? Yeah. Well, you are still more responsible for that than the consumer, and you're not going to win the argument to the consumer where you're like, you should you, you have been at your door then. Yeah, it's like, fuck you. I didn't know when this was arriving. Thing. You didn't tell me that. Yeah, it's no. weird because in the in the UK, leaving stuff on the front porch like that just doesn't happen. I, if it's a, oh, really? anything, you yeah, have it's to accept it. Yeah, it's it's almost all of that stuff is you got to sign for it. Like, and, and I noticed in the US, like they will leave a three thousand dollar laptop on your fucking porch, and they don't give a fuck. Really? And th- you don't even have an option when you order it to say, "I would yeah. like." to set it up for, like, signed delivery, please. In the UK, you almost always have that option to say, oh, I want um, Royal Mail special delivery, which is always a signature, or I want this form of tracked mail right. or whatever. So it's very, it's very strange to see the difference between that and America. Really, really odd. You, know, you have to sign for it pretty much all the time. Of course, there is the pain in the ass that they just won't leave it there, so as a result, you have to, like, go to the post office or arrange for a re-delivery or whatever. But. I hate that shit so much when I get a notice and it's like, you weren't here three days in a row. And I'm like, what do you mean I wasn't here three days in a row? This is the first time I'm getting this notice. I, fu- yeah. I hate, I hate, Dodgers, I hate they, you. They, they, they knocked on the, they gave it a little. Yeah, oh, there, there is a, dis, there's definitely a disadvantage I, 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 to that. I don't want to disturb her. I, I don't, there have been numerous times where I've had the online thing say it was delivered. And it wasn't delivered. And then I call, and, and they'd be like, well, sir, it says it was delivered. And then three days later, I get the package. And I'm like, wait, that happens. so what wasn't delivered? So, <laughs> what, yeah. What? Did they just say it was delivered? Why would they say it was delivered? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. Like, what? Oh, it's so frustrating. I get weirded out. Like, I live in an apartment complex. I'll walk by, and there's just someone's fucking FedEx box. And I know this right is there. not an apartment. It's just everywhere. But, like, yo, that's a weird process where they're just like, here's... Here's their house generally. Like, there's so... Guys, I put a fucking yard gnome in front of my door, and someone stole that. A yeah. yard gnome. Like, a, a mysterious box? Come on. Plant. Someone stole a plant from yeah. in front of my apartment door. Aww. And I was like, why would you steal a plant? It stole was the one green thing I owned. any of the stuff outside of my apartment. Although, uh, somebody totally just broke into our like building manager's apartment and took all of his TVs <laughs> and he oh, was like shut oh, it down no. he like beefed up security immediately was like bad. Nope. <laughs> very bad yeah, yeah. yes well, that's and great. that's why that's i get everything secure. digitally these days yeah. like see that was the thing is that thanks to technology um all of our doors have these weird the 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 little peephole is actually a screen on the other side Damn. So if you ring the doorbell, it snaps a photo of the person who's on the other side so that Damn. you can see their face. You, you live so, in Microsoft is what's happening. 
you, 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 can, you can yeah. buy a system. I think I saw a system like that on Amazon recently, which is actually quite cheap and easy to set up. And it actually call if you're out of the house, it video calls your phone. Yeah. So you, and you can talk to the person. That. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. That's weird. It's, it's, it's that's kind of useful. Um, but it wound up making it so that they knew exactly who stole all of his stuff. Because the guy yeah. had sat there ringing the doorbell to make sure that nobody was home. So there were like Whoa. 20 nah. pictures of his face. Nice. Nice. <laughs> like, you dummy. That's awesome. Yeah. That's incredible. No, Shit. so here's final story from me, at least. Before we go to the break, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the garden gnome, actually. Um, it was one of those really weird ideas where I, was, I thought I was being cool. I took Anna on Valentine's Day to a painting class and uh, had a great had had a great time. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of my soul that survived, but anyways, we, li- we <laughs> live here, and I put on my porch, it's there for a couple of months, great, honey. one day it's I gone, it. I'm like, ah, you know, I didn't care, I was like, that's weird, like, who would take that? Go on with my day. The next day, guys, I'm not fucking making this up, the next day, the garden gnome is returned with red lipstick kisses all over it. <laughs> that's amazing! We, uh, I came home and I'm, I'm like walking up and I see my little gnome there and I'm like, oh, that's weird. They returned it and I like pick mm. it up and I'm like, huh, do I, is this flattering? Is it creepy? Is it cool? I don't know. I did it's not a know. It's a gnome conspiracy is what it is. And now it's gone. So it was like, it was like, wait, whoa, you know, wait, whoa, 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 yeah. hold on, hold on. You can't just go and now it's gone. Wait, someone stole the gnome. Returned it with kisses, then stole it again. Yes, this is and some. This is some sure Cox and Dodgson. Bro, that's <laughs> right here. we need to investigate this. We'll shit. be there in five minutes. We will, we will investigate I've watched, this. I've watched enough CSI to know that this person is escalating and is soon to become a full-on rapist, probably. Right. And murder. Yeah, probably. Like a dog, real of fucking garden quick. Gnomes. <laughs> Only of garden gnomes. That's Only my- of garden gnomes. I was about yeah. to compare it to a Sam Pepper social experiment, but maybe now I don't want to do that. Don't want to give many ideas. No. It's just a prank, bro. Sam I'm Pepper needs to be arrested. Just a prank, bro. Can we do that? I, I no, certainly Sam, hope not. Put a garden not. gnome up your butt? No, Sam, I'll leave that to you all butt. by yourself. <laughs> yeah, you, you, can, you, can, you can do that, just not on this stream. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, oh, plenty more video games to talk about. You're watching the Corruptional Podcast. Don't go anywhere. Watch our ads and give me money. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Corruptional Podcast. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was my uh, James Hetfield impression. Welcome back to the Corruptional Podcast. Yeah. I don't know who that is. Who is that? Lead singer oh, and guitarist of Metallica. Oh. If he was, if go. he was the and lead singer star of, like, at the end of everything, Patsu Pantsu, you'd be all over that. You'd be like, oh yeah. <laughs> no, my I still wouldn't know. Hatsu, Pantsu, I still nah. wouldn't know the members of Hatsu Pantsu. I would just Hatsu, know Hatsu, Hatsu Pantsu, much like with Metallica. Yeah, I know Metallica. Yeah. I just don't know who's in Metallica. <laughs> oh, they're out. Mm-hmm. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you guys seen Sai's new music video? Oh my god. Nope. Ah! The song is called Daddy, and you guys have to watch is. the music video. It's oh, uh, I don't know how he's continued to figure out how to make songs that are super weird with a music video that's super weird, but still make it extremely catchy. <laughs> it's like he has a gift. Wait, is it a cartoon? No. <laughs> okay, I guess that's the end of that conversation. All right, let's move on. <laughs> yes, no, he has another song called Father. Is it a cartoon? No. Oh, it's called no. Daddy. It's literally called Daddy. When I looked up Psy Daddy, it gave me Psy Father. <laughs> it's not a version. I'm bad at the internet. I don't uh, get any of this. Moving swiftly on from the K-pop nonsense. Can I do my uh, free to play thing now? Sure. Do okay. it. I prefer yeah. you didn't, but I guess you're gonna. So. All right. Uh, let me tell you a tale. This is a tale of uh, pay to win of epic proportions. This is a tale of a game called Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, which is on iOS and Android. So I'd heard about this a couple of months ago, and. I got the impression that it was actually like a Star Wars collectible card game. I was like, holy shit, if that is, that, that's my jam right there. It's not a collectible card game. It's a collectible hero game, hmm. which basically means 
you get heroes from the Star Wars universe, you level them up, and it's a squad battle RPG. Kind of like Final Fantasy. Like, it's five on five. You know, all your dudes have a couple of different abilities. It's turn-based. You know, once someone's bar gets up to the top, that's when they get to attack. You know, very much quite similar to Final Fantasy Record Keeper, actually. But, you know, Star Wars. So that actually sounds great. I'm going to play that. Uh, that sounds like a good toilet game. That sounds like the kind of thing that you can play when you have mm. access to nothing else. And what I found was a wretched hive of scum and pay to win beyond any proportions I have yes. ever experienced. And I have fully immersed myself in that fact. I have decided <laughs> to be a sinner, a pay to win a <laughs> sinner, pay to oh sin. God. As you as you may describe it, and it's weird because I've I've never really played a truly pay to win game before. Some people will argue that oh Hearthstone is pay to win, etc. You you have no idea. You compared to games like this, not even close. This is far. This is an order of magnitude beyond it. So let me explain how. So as you go through the tutorials, you get a bunch of kind of basic characters. So you get, like, Clone Wars Chewbacca is really one of the only recognizable characters. Everyone else is like, a, uh, um, I don't think you even get a Stormtrooper, actually. I'm pretty sure that's, like, uh, a more premium character. You get, like, uh, a Night Sister Initiate, an Ewok Scout, you know, a hmm. shitty, a Royal Guard, maybe the best you get. You know, shitty characters, no one, things that nobody cares about. And these are good enough to start doing the PvE. So the main meat of the game... The main meat of the game is the PvE campaigns. It's a light side campaign and a dark side campaign. So you need to maintain two different teams of characters in order to do this. So you start playing through and you can three star every level. If you get through a level without anybody of your squad dying, you get three stars and so on and so forth. You get money, experience and little bits of gear and cool. And you keep moving on and it gets harder and harder and harder the, f the further you go through. And the various campaigns are locked via your account level so you can't access this before you get to a certain level and that's the case with a lot of features and you start to unlock these features like pvp you start to unlock something called the cantina battles which get you access to specific like leveling up materials and different kinds of currencies and all this kind of thing so far so good right well it obviously has premium packs like any collectible game would now, normally, when you open a pack in something like Hearthstone, you get cards out of it, right? And it's like, great, I have this card. I can play it immediately. So in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, you don't necessarily get a full card. You get bits of one. The entire system is based around something called shards. And characters you can unlock once you gain enough shards in that character. The really basic characters you can get quite quickly, but the really super fucking famous ones, they usually cost like 80 shards each. Now, when you open these premium packs, which are a good few dollars each, by the way, they won't necessarily even give you a character. They'll give you shards of a character. Oh, God. Yeah. So I got, like, 12 shards for Darth Maul or whatever. It's like, wow, great. So I unlock Darth Maul, and the game's like, no, you need 80 shards to unlock Darth Maul. I'm like, wait a minute. Didn't I just, didn't I just pay for this? Like, I, so I don't get a full character out of this. And they're like, no. You get, you get bits of one. Eventually, you'll be able to unlock it. I'm like, holy shit. This is an incredible level of evil. But it gets, <laughs> it gets way, way worse. Way, way worse than that. He said typing in his PayPal account. Oh, I, I've thrown tons of money at this game already. <laughs> so after you've done that, you think, all right, great. I've got to, you finally unlock the character you want. That's amazing. I've got the character I want. This is awesome. Characters have star ratings. Every character can be up to a seven-star character. So even if you pull a character from a premium pack, it might be a shitty version of that character. It's like, great, I got Darth Sidious! Oh, it's a two-star Darth Sidious, not a four-star Darth Sidious. In order to level them up, guess what you need? More fucking shards. And you have to keep collecting them, and it goes up every time you level up a star. And once you get a, an additional star, all the stats of your character increase. So, like, a three-star character is objectively worse than a four-star character, etc., etc., and it goes all the way up to seven stars. And there's various ways to acquire these shards, but the way that you do it is incredibly slow. Doing the hard mode missions might get you one shard. Maybe. Sometimes it doesn't drop. Sometimes it does. So you have to repeat these missions. You can do something called simming, which is like, uh, if you've beaten a level on three stars, you can sim a battle, which means that it'll automatically beat it for you. But in order to do that, you have to spend energy. 
there are like four different energy bars in this game. Like, when you play a battle, it takes six energy. When you play a hard mode battle, it takes 12 energy. When you run out of energy, of course, you can't do any battles until it recharges. But of course, of course, you can buy a recharge for the energy. And it gradually increases in cost. It starts off by saying, oh, it'll just cost you 50 crystals. That's nothing, right? You can get 50 crystals easy. Yeah. And then it goes up to 100, then 200. It actually maxes out, I think, in a day at 800, which is about $10 to refresh right. that energy bar. And that's not the only energy bar. There's an, there are multiple energy bars for different things. So there's a separate energy bar for the cantina battles. And there are timers for things like PvP. So if you How many do, people are playing this? Millions, probably, at this point. Like, huge I'm amounts of people. I'm literally watching a video of a guy un, like, unbox or whatever he's doing. Like, the undo the packages. And, and he's going through the packages and he just got... He's like... 12 stars for Savage Press. Look at him. 12 Look shards. At him. He's so cool. Yeah, so in other words, Savage. he didn't even get the character. He got bits of the character. He couldn't even play He's it yet. So excited. Yeah. So he got excited happy. about getting Jesse, bits of a character. Link, can you link that? I want to watch. That sounds yes. like my That jam. sounds incredible. <laughs> a guy Sam. going <laughs> Sam. for Savage. Look at him. Savage Press. And I'm like First off, one of the worst named Star Wars characters ever. <laughs> Like, oh, that is... I love this dude. I dig this guy. Wow. But someone in chat's like, yeah, Star Wars Old Republic, worst free-to-play model out there. Are you fucking kidding me? You've never played this. Like, people that think <coughs> that Western PC games are worst free-to-play model ever have never played an iOS game. You have no <laughs> clue how bad these can get. So, here's where the true pay-to-win comes in. Game has PvP. Of course it does. The PvP is like a lot of these games where... You get to control your squad, but the enemy squad is controlled by the AI. So it means you can always get a battle, but obviously you, it's not really PvP. You're just beating up the guy's squad. Now, when right. you beat them, you take whatever their rank was. Now, as you rank up, you get more rewards daily based on the, your rank at the end of the day. But the thing is, there's no like level bracketing. There's no level cap, and there's no cap on the characters you can use. You can literally use any characters you want in the free-to-play battles. You can even mix like light side and dark side, so you can put together your best fucking team. What this means is that in order to actually rank up, you need to refresh the number of PvP attempts you get, because you only get to fight five PvP battles a day unless you pay to refresh. Oh my god, so this that, literally this is, is the, the worst, worst game yeah. I've ever So that's how you grind that up. But you can also bring your fucking pay-to-win characters in against these guys who have nothing but free stuff. And there are characters that are just flat-out objectively better. Like, they, they really are. Like Not only does the star system mean that your three-star Sidious is better than their like one-star Sidious, but there are characters that are just so much better in terms of the amount of abilities they have and like how they're statted. You know, your regular guy, like uh, Chewbacca, for instance. Chewbacca's maybe the, the best free-to-play character that you can get for free at the start of the game. He's like, yeah, he has a, a basic attack, he has a taunt, and if you level him up enough, he gets this, uh, what's called Defiant Roar, which is like a heal and a buff. But then there are characters like, oh, I've got an attack, but... Like, uh, Count Dooku is a great example. Count Dooku, over overpowered as shit. They actually offer you very early in the game, for five bucks, Count Dooku. And of course I bought it. And that's totally the right thing to do, because he's overpowered as shit. So his attack is like, you know, a regular guy might just attack. No, 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 not Count Dooku. You attack with Count Dooku, he has a chance to attack again. Not only that, but if he attacks a Jedi, he has a chance to do either an ability lock or a stun or both. So How many stars is Count Dooku? Well, my Count Dooku is three stars, but he could be seven. That's not four. Oh. No. Not four oh, yet. Bought, not four. You could have bought a, fi a five or seven star Dooku. No, he you needs can't. shards to upgrade. Yeah, you his, need shards to upgrade it. three star yeah. Count Dooku. Sounds like you're not working hard enough on your I'm castle. not working hard enough. I'm not paying enough. enough. Yeah. The, the hilarious <laughs> thing about it is that, you know, as I said, like the only people who are high ranking PvP are absolutely the ones that have paid to win because it is literally impossible. Bearing in mind the game's only been out for six days. They did a soft launch somewhere, but everyone who's playing right now is all like, has all started six days ago. It is impossible to be high ranking PvP if you have not paid for extra attempts because you literally cannot fight enough people if you haven't paid. And even if you have, once you start hitting the higher rank guys that have the really good setups, you're not going to beat them anyway because they have really, really good stuff. The characters can level up, and I believe no less than four different ways. <laughs> There's the star rating. 
there is their abilities, which can only be leveled up with ability materials. So, like, you, uh, you have your basic level one abilities, and then the, those abilities gain additional properties as you level them up. So it's like, okay, now my attack has a extra chance to counter and blah, blah, blah. So it gets better and better and better. And you can level up the characters in terms of their actual level. And you can also level them up in terms of gear level. So you acquire gear for your characters, you get six pieces of gear, and then that levels the gear up. So they get statistically better again. It's This is sounding a lot like Record Keeper, but infinitely more evil. Uh, yeah, it, it basically yeah. is Record Keeper, but a lot more evil, from what I can tell. Uh, it gets even worse, because the, the, it's a very much a rich-get-richer sort of thing. Once you hit <laughs> level 40, you get access to this really big dungeon thing called the Galactic War, which you get to do every day. And it puts you in a kind of gauntlet against a bunch of random people's squads. And every time you win one of these, you get a ton of really valuable materials and a shitload of money. And in order to beat this whole dungeon, you need a really good squad. Because when you take damage, the damage is persistent. And once one guy gets knocked out, you can't use him for the rest of the day in that mode. In order to really beat this mode, you have to have a bunch of like pay-to-win characters. But if you beat the mode, you have so many of these really rare XP materials and so much money that you can level up your guys again much, much faster than everybody else can. So again, it's rich get richer, rich get richer, rich get richer all the fucking time. It's amazing how evil this game is. Let's talk off stream, but I have this actually really cool kind of a conical shaped business plan that I want to want to talk to you about. It's it's where <laughs> we everyone involved makes money, man. Like we all win. It's it's really great. So let's just talk off stream. It's fine. Absolutely. Let's uh, let's get the pyramid out. scheme going. Yeah. You know what the really sad thing about it is that like at the core of it, it's it's a pretty good squad battle game. You know, it's nicely thematic. All of the characters have different abilities that are sort of themed to their character, and there's some really obscure guys. You know, you, you can get um, Han in a stormtrooper outfit, who has specific abilities themed to when Han was wearing a stormtrooper outfit in Episode Four. There's several versions of Anakin Skywalker. You know, there's several versions of Luke Skywalker. There's Luke Skywalker, far, like the farm boy Luke Skywalker, with his little rifle. And then there's, like, mm -hmm. an actual Luke Skywalker. There's two versions of Obi-Wan Kenobi, the old version Who the version fuck would play farm boy Luke Skywalker? That was the worst Luke Skywalker. He's pretty rubbish, like, all, all things considered. And, but the, um... Yeah, he can hit a womp rat from 7.2 meters away. I believe that's one of his abilities. Bullseyeing womp rats, cool. I think, is, I like, his special. Tashi station. <laughs> yeah, going to pick up some power converters. But it's, like... Yeah, the actual squad battling is, is pretty good. Like, setting up a team that has, like, cool synergies that works really well together, and if you like the kind of Final Fantasy battling system, it's, like, at its core, a pretty fucking fun game. It's just the level of evil when it comes to every single little thing being geared to get money out of you is yeah, it's, just it's awesome. amazing. And you know what? The sad thing is it feels good. It feels good beating the shit out of these guys that clearly don't have as much money as me. It's like, finally... I found a time in life where having more money than someone else will give me an edge. Oh, come on. Yeah, no, that's that's crazy. I never would have thought that. For this that... Opportunity your whole I've been life. looking for this. I've been looking money. for this opportunity Finally, my entire life. It's Finally, about time. It's about time having a lot of money paid off. Gave yeah. you an I... upper hand over other people. I it's can't... about yeah. time. You're taught. You're yeah. preaching to the choir. Hang on, yeah. Wilfred. I said diet coke. God damn it. <laughs> Shut your face! Alright, anyways. That is my servant, Wilfred. But yeah, having money is more work than it's cut out to be. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard work, no doubt. Mm. It, it feels oh, good. Wilfred. It's so sad. It feels, <laughs> yeah. it feels great. It feels good to pay to sin, man. It does. It feels great to pay to sin. I Total hope this biscuit. is the start of now, your What downfall. is this? I don't know, man. Slowly, Eventually, slowly it had to happen. That guy who's like, I spent $38,000 on Clash of Clans or whatever. John, if you like this idea, let me tell you about this hot little thing they got going on right now where you could actually give a person money before something comes out and reserve your right <laughs> to Whoa. pick up that item. before. Yeah, but do I gain an advantage? <laughs> yeah, there's If I don't DLC. gain an advantage over everybody else, what's the point? There's you know? DLC content only exclusive to you? Wow! What if they sell out? Now that's not an issue for you. Can my characters be statistically better than the guy that didn't pay? Absolutely. Because if not, oh, actually, you'll get the ultimate best weapon of the game, but at level yeah. one. A reskin version of a gun that everybody else has. It's amazing. Yeah. Man. Are we talking about Battlefront right now? <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, the point of all of that, other than this all being, like, really weird and the, the first time I think I've ever really played a truly pay-to-win game, not only can I understand why people get super into things like Clash of Clans as, and spend a lot of money on it, but anybody who whines again about pay-to-win on PC, I'm going to find them, come to their house, and slap them around the face with an iPad. They do not understand the level of you know, what true pay-to-win actually is. Mm. You know, there's, there is nothing on PC in the West that is even close. Just even not close to this. Swap, uh, slap them with just your wads of cash. Just yeah, giant just do that. thick wads of Benjamins. Just yeah. Slap. Pay to sin. That's what it is, man. That's it, so funny you're indulging that, though. I, I don't know. It's just, it's weird. It just feels good. It's, uh, it must be what gambling addicts feel like. Your hypocrisy is hilarious. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Hypocrisy doesn't matter. Thank you, Jesse. I'm not running for uh, president. I don't give a fuck. I actually, I, you are not running for president. You're a game journalist, though, John, or at least no. that's what Twitter told me. That's so. what Twitter told you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well-respected game journalist. Thank you very well, much. Indeed. Just, uh, to true, I, I, you know, my official job title is Jenna's husband. To truly yeah. understand the pay-to-win, you must you you must come into the pay-to-win. You must be exposed to the pay-to-win. You must be molded by the pay-to-win. I don't want to uh, understand. Oh, you're like you must, you're like. You're like no. Dark Empire Luke when he has to go become join the dark side in order to truly master the force uh, in the expanded yep, universe exactly. that isn't canon Ironic anymore. Ironic, he yep. owns that skin. It cost him five ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> right now, the game is offering me a pack of really powerful characters for 45 bucks. <laughs> Literally just saying, buy these. You do it. It's great. I am a whale in this. I'm, I'm singing with the whales. You are the whale. Game. You're the whale, the whale of this game. Yeah. And really, like, all of you should be really fucking... Uh, you know, like thankful to me because I am paying for your free to play experience. Mm. I am paying for your free to play. You are the reason you guys get to play this game for free because I am subsidizing this development. Kirk and Spock went back in time in Star Trek to save TB. That was the premise of that movie. That's Someone's what that movie play was that about. Star Wars game. Yeah, the whole thing. I mean, they didn't want it to be people in the game because that wouldn't be quite as interesting. So they just used real whales. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. That's really nice. We make good whales, Dodger. <laughs> all, of, all of us doing our, doing our whales. Oh. Yep. So that is that is my Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes free to play experience. I think my time is refresh uh, at about midnight tonight, so I'll be playing that again. All right. What else has everybody been playing this week? Well, I tried out masturbation for the first time, and I found it pretty great. Uh huh. Go on. Uh, here's the thing. I know you're lying. I would never. I would never <laughs> you fucking liar. For a minute. Get out of here. Uh, it's a joke on what he was doing. God. Nope. <laughs> no, guys. Can, can you it's pay for it to possible. be better? It's not possible for a boy to go through his like 12 year old, 13 year old self without figuring that one out. Can you pay not... for a better experience though? Yeah. I'm... Yes. You is that legal? It's crazy. My lord. Is that legal? Do we have to? Have... <laughs> is it legal? Yeah. It's a. <laughs> Yeah, you could pay for someone else's hand to do it, actually. It's pretty incredible. Um, hey, I'm I, I just moving. meant this to be a joke, and we all laughed and moved on. But we're no, actually... we're just going to make it as no, awkward no, as possible for you. Yeah. It. Did you guys see yeah, that no. Reddit post where the dad found uh, the kid's fleshlight that had, like, a oh. sucker on it so that it would stick to the bathroom wall? And, and he posted found it, it on bathroom. Facebook and said, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, like, I heard no, about dog. that. I was like, oh, Jesus dog Christ. Dog a fleshlight. And he was like, no, my son wouldn't. My son would wouldn't never have something like that. <laughs> it was good. I was like, oh, oh sweet. That's, that's yeah. happened a few times. It's the one where the person found the anal beads or whatever and was like, my mom's necklace looks weird as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, dude, I got to tell you, your mom's a freak. <laughs> like, oh, no. my God. I love it. Yeah. Sex toys for everybody. <laughs> for everybody. You know what? Let's just buy them. For everyone should have them so it doesn't come weird. Yeah, toys. it actually becomes weird yeah. not to own them now. Yeah. Uh, since we're telling awkward sex stories. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't actually the plan of this segment, but... <laughs> I got one that's kind of related to that, and it was uh, one time... Yes. I don't even know how many years ago this was, because I'm I was just going to leave the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes topic on the, on the bottom here. Yeah, it's going to be great. It was, it was many years ago, but I remember sitting at my grandparents' table... And uh, my grandfather's birthday was that weekend. And I was like, how old do you turn? Pa I call him Papa. And he says, I'm turning 69. And I said, <laughs> I didn't say anything. I just kind of like looked ponderously and was like, huh. And he's like, 
is there something wrong with that number, Jeff? And I was like, no, I, I was like, that's, yeah, I, I just, I just wanted to know. And he goes, let's leave sex out of a relationship. And I was like, <laughs> my like seven year old grandfather knows what 69 is. And I don't, I don't know how that happened in this world. And like you were, you wanted to drop it and he was like, no, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. Just like you guys did. Everyone knows that. Like, I I wanted just the tip of awkwardness, and you guys went all in on this. It's we've known each other for way too. We've been doing this show for so long now. And also, just the tip is a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie in order to get all in. So don't don't pretend. You knew what was going to happen. Just you saw when you accepted it. You knew what was going to (laughs) happen. It's happening. Uh huh. <laughs> Dear Lord. Now... I was like, I'm disavowing all knowledge of your actions. What is your story in relation to this? When you said you wanted just the tip, you actually wanted all in. Like, I like it. I like that story. I like the implications. Guys, remember when um, dragons banging cars was really big? I, do. I don't think it was I ever do. really big. It was but... really big. <laughs> it's on Reddit, at least. Really the dragons that. were the dragons were big when they were banging those cars. They were. They're yes. huge. Mm-hmm. And now everybody go search for dragon dildos and let's move on. I saw that picture, man. That's it's out there. I to this day want to point out that we have friends who had the chance to be the song representation of the dragon dildo website, and they turned it down. True. They were going to have the song, Back. the theme song for the Dragon Dildo website, and they turned it down. I have never hated people more. Fools. I would make Fools. a theme song for them in a heartbeat. And it'd be like, it'd be like the Gummy Bears theme song, too. It'd be that, that kind of catchy. That's Dragon cool Dildos, Dragon bouncing Dildos. here and there and everywhere. <laughs> I mean, Behind you gotta, adventures like, that <laughs> That'd be an interesting dildo. <laughs> <laughs> It's not even veiny. It's just it's it's uh, scaled is what you would say, right? Scaled I for mean, her pleasure. Who knows? Like you wouldn't think that cats have barbed penises, but they do. So maybe dragons have like what? Or what? What? Yeah, they yeah. do. Man. They yeah. hook it in there. Actually, yeah. Wait, cats have barbs on their wee wings. Yeah, they yeah they like go in and then I've they have never hooks this a way. Cat's dick so that like much in my life. Yeah. Dodge, Dodger nose. That's why yeah. cats, I just, I'm a cat person. I know what their dicks look like. I know what cat dicks it look comes, like. I don't. Comes. I've gone my entire life without knowing, and I'm okay with that. Got barbs on there. I knew that. I knew that. Banging a cat is hell, so don't do it. I want I you all to know. I want you all to know <laughs> that I'm expecting the email from my mother that is going to be like, <laughs> "You guys are fucking sick." You know that? That's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get that email. And she's going to be like, I, "Hi, mom." Gonna, she was and gonna, then Jesse, like, you're going to be like, lovely. "What's this picture attached?" <laughs> It's like, Mom, why'd you send me a picture of your pearl necklace? I don't understand. <laughs> That's, That's anal fault. beads. Oh, no. Yep, yeah. I'm going to get a mess. Like, it's going to be something really nice. It's going to be like, good podcast today. A little weird, though. That's what I'm going to get. It's going to be a real passive aggressive. Like, uh, it was good. A little strange. And it's still funny. more value podcast... than the entire talk about that, that game that John was just describing. Yeah, how did we get here? I EA, like pay to send. Here. Well, I was EA saying, pay to send. <laughs> we got on board the EA train, and we ended up talking Look, about... this is what like, happens when you pay to sin. You just get deeper into sin. More yeah. and more. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so. I'm so glad that this is the one thing that I do that my mom doesn't watch. Mm. Well, you could have phrased that a lot better, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I get it. It's good. Yeah. That was good. Yep, that was a good one. A good I mean, one. maybe it's true, too. I don't know. but it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Moving swiftly on video, video games. Yeah. What else has people, people been playing this week? It took a while to figure out why that was weird. She was like, I don't. What's it weird did, about it that? It took me a bit. I was like, huh? What's weird about what that? What else uh, have we been playing this week, you fucks? Nothing. Come on. Nothing. <laughs> well, what a, okay, do games no, on like Rosetta Floyd. Stone have the talk. Have the talk. Games okay. on Rosetta Stone? Are you fucking yeah. for real? What the hell? Oh, God. 
You're an embarrassment. Jeff, Jeff, has a, Jeff has a more legit one. We'll let him go. We were going to talk about the uh, Legacy of the Void story. And, and yes, our... let's let's do that. Yeah, let's let's do uh, Legacy of the Void campaign. We're gonna, this is going to be spoilerific, by the way. I'm going to put the spoiler warning up yeah, on the screen has... here. So, spoiler warning is now active. We're going to talk about the story or what there was of it. Uh, Jeff, let's uh, let's start with you on this one, and then we'll uh, we'll get into Jesse's amusing rant on this subject. Yes. Okay. So, I know I'm long winded. I'll try to be quick. Um, for the most part, Legacy of the Void's story, I think, falls victim to its predecessors. I feel like the characters set up in Wings of Liberty and Hots are just absolute shit, like hot garbage piles of shit in terms of like, why do we care about what they're fighting for? Oh, I don't, because that's an absolute ridiculous reason for that, and and. There's a space opera love story going on here or something, but she's a genocidal maniac, but he's willing to look past that. The alien, like, now she's not alien, then she goes back to alien because she needs to fucking kill the people that didn't kill Jim, but maybe kill Jim. Like, it gets it gets really weird. And again, I'm going to suspend a lot of disbelief because at the same time, too, this is an RTS story arc. We're not talking about Mist or fucking, you know, like, we're not talking about a transformation story that's supposed to drop you to your knees and have you rip your garment because you're just so moved by it. Legacy of the Void gameplay is fucking fantastic single player. I, I really enjoyed, I thought, uh, the Wings Liberty and Hot's mechanic of, like, RTS, but with different tech trees and abilities and hero characters and not just straight-up RTS missions. I think Legacy of the Void is the culmination of them lear learning how to do that the best, and I think yeah. that was a fantastic experience. Here's it's definitely one of the best, me mechanically anyway, one of the best yes. RTS campaigns that's ever been made. Like The sheer amount of variety yeah. in the way that each mission plays out and the amount of yes. customization that you have with how you want to play it, incredible. Plus, not to mention the amount of like optional objectives and achievements and replayability that's there. All great. So then we get into the Protoss story arc of Legacy of the Void to close out the StarCraft II chapter. Um, and it's just... I think Jesse's going to be a lot more eloquent about this, and I'm really looking forward to hearing from him. But for me, it was, like, it was, it was high-level comedy done ironically. Like, just so much ludicrous extremism in different areas but then like just washed over with the like rampaging optimism of the protoss which comes out of nowhere all of a sudden legacy of the void he's like antaro dune alarak and alarak's like you're a slave i'm gonna murder everyone eventually and i'm actually fucking evil and he's like but brother what if we fought together and he's like i mean are you dumb enough to believe that i'll do that and he's like yes brother of course i am and he's like yeah, all right. All my all my one liners are talking about slavery and murdering shit, but if you're cool with this, like we could fucking do it. He was gonna turn me into a hybrid, he broke his promise, so now I wanna murder his shit. But first we have to take back my people through a ridiculous Goku esque battle across the battlefield, and then once I gain oh my control God, of my yeah, people, fight. I'm gonna then start, you know, we'll murder the our common enemy, but just as long as you understand I'm evil. And and he's like, Brother we're Protoss. It's not possible for... He's like, shut up! I'm evil! He's like, alright. You're evil. And as a result, he was the best character <laughs> in the game. Yeah, so they do this shit, okay? They, like, come together. They they go to fight him, but then it becomes, like, a Final Fantasy transcend, transcendent, like... Oh, the epilogue is ridiculous. Uh, like, we killed him, but not really, you know? You gotta go into the warp all of a sudden, which has its own... So here's my overall, like, problem. The crystals, what are they fucking called? The resources? Solarite? That is space. Solarite. Solarite. Yeah. Solarite space comes poop. out of almost nowhere. It's mentioned before, but then it becomes like the all-consuming important thing that drives everything. The warp is always talked about as like these beings from the warp or the whatever. Void. Void. Yeah. The void. Excuse I me, mean, yeah. it literally is ripped whole cloth from 40k. Void. I mean, there's no I doubt about spoke. that. Yeah. But, okay, so in Legacy of the Void, then they just like, they just throat punch you at the end of that with like, no, actually, it's all about the void. Like, you have to go into the void to then figure out that that's where the last remaining uh, of these beings are there. He killed the other ones. Like, that part's kind of cool, actually. But but he's sent the back Zelnaga, there. Yeah. But then it turns out that his right-hand man was also a Zelnaga or, or something like that. So he didn't kill all of them. And that one was a dark one as well. And then you have that big fight with him. And you can only kill them in the warp. Uh, not warp again. Excuse me. Void. And then it again ends on the last mission with you killing, of course, uh, Amon, yeah. because you can only do it there. But the like the whole fight is so trite. He's like, I will, over time, bite out pieces of your base. 
and you're like, well, why didn't you just do that from the beginning? Like, you're not charging up or anything. There's, you're just choosing to eat it's at that of, time. It's, well, I don't yeah. want to just win. Well, there's so an achievement, so you have to be able to avoid it. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, saying, like, it's, the, the, the mechanic itself is story. solely designed to, to build, like, a gameplay tension. As an actual story element, it's stupid yeah. as shit. I mean, there's no Imagine doubt. Imagine you get to the final boss of an FPS, okay, and he's like, I've got the gun of purity. And every four minutes, I'll shoot you with it, and it does exactly a quarter of your health. Like, if you tried to pass that off on people, right? And he's like, Kablowy! In four more minutes, you're really fucked! And he does nothing. <laughs> nothing else in that time. What, what person is like, oh, the end of COD was weird. That guy that just kept yelling at me and shot me every four minutes? Man. No, nobody would accept that. But in an RTS, we're supposed to because it's like, well, it's an RTS, so how do you do story? So that's my rant. It was terrible. Ludo narrative dissonance, I think, is, is kind of the term you're looking for there. And I think the main problem is that the, uh, the story just seemed like a giant justification for all the silly shit that you're doing. Yes. And the, uh, in terms of like the mechanics and the level design, it's all great. Like, I love the fact that every single level is completely different. And yeah, they reuse a few mechanics from the previous two games, but like, I don't think any other RTS campaign has really done it that well. Even if you look, go back and look at Command & Conquer, yes, CNC had some missions that were a bit varied, like the Commando missions, but a lot of the missions were very similar to each other. They were just kill enemy base, kill or, enemy base, yeah, kill enemy squad base. squad-based or actual RTS, but that was yeah. the three. It was, yeah. it was Tanya, squad-based, army. Yeah. But with, with StarCraft II, they did, you know, and they've done this the whole way through, every single mission is usually a bit different in its own way. It's all got its unique spin or a unique mechanic that's never used again. I mean, the fucking uh, level where you have t your bases on this kind of platform that you can move yeah. to different places in the level, Pretty that's cool. incredibly interesting. And space they, they, they only Yeah, space levels. They only do it once, too. You know, yeah. it's, it's really, really good like that. Absolutely love it. Uh, that's the way that StarCraft Two kind of does it really, really well. There's other RTSs that have carried it like better with story, yeah. I certainly say, like, CNC story is obviously cheese balls, but it's really fun cheese balls. Mechanically, it's fantastic. I, I, there was a couple missions, and I'm a former professional player, where I couldn't... So in Wings, Liberty, and Hots... You I just admit like it is a caster, like, guys. Reddit, yeah, get well, on that. That's, that's happened already. But anyways, <laughs> like, uh, you could just make space marine, or marines and, and medevacs just run them over. The whole game, that's pretty much what you did. But in Legacy of the Void... You needed different compositions. You were actually rewarded for the different types of units, which were very varied and stuff. You could have like a Tempest or a Carrier, a Reaver or a Disruptor. Like it was very, there was a lot of variety. And I thought that was really, really cool. And the story, like I'm exaggerating because I love StarCraft so much that when it, when it pains me how bad the story is, it hurts more, I think. But for like the average person that doesn't have as much invested, I feel it's not so glaringly bad that it ruins it. I think the story's okay, but... If you look well, at the story, like, I didn't if they, care if they about wrote anything a web comic happening. of this story, I think most people would be like, this is fucking weird and bad. <laughs> I just, I, I, just I, shows up, he's like, we found this temple through this really indirect means, it's super important, no one's been there in a hundred million years, and Kerrigan just crashes through the wall, she's like, guys, thank god you're here. And they're like, what? like nobody's like, oh, How Kerrigan, the fuck right? did you get here? <laughs> she so, doesn't even care. Alright, Jesse's lore analysis, here we go, this should be good. So three things are really important here. Just the first off the top is Blizz gave an interview. Uh, I don't know when this was. I wish I could give you a link to it. But mm -hmm. I remember it because it drove me crazy when I heard it. But uh, during the interview, the devs, and it wasn't StarCraft. I think they were talking about WoW at the time. But I feel like it's across the board, every single one of their games. So the devs basically said, to us, gameplay is the most important element. Story comes second. And it's really glaring obvious that like that's been the case the last couple years. But it was never that way in the beginning. And if you go back 10 years, you can see that it was never that way. And I look, I don't want to, if I got to blame someone, I feel like I want to blame Activision for this, but I don't know who to blame. It's someone's fault. Someone's to blame, but it never was that way before. So that's just point one. Um, point two about the game, StarCraft II storyline is, if you're a fan of StarCraft, it's a shame. Like the storyline <laughs> is, you're absolutely right. It's all If you the played place, Brood crazy. War. It's yeah. If you played, it's a if joke. you played StarCraft and you played Brood War, StarCraft Two storyline. While the individual campaigns are fun, mm -hmm. the overall story is insane gibberish. And yes. especially when you see where StarCraft started, which was the idea that there are no good guys. Right in yeah. StarCraft One and Brood War, 
The Protoss are blowing up planets, and you're like, why the hell are they doing this? What's going on? The Zerg are, like, swarming because everywhere. Because they're the Eldar. Yeah, Minx the, and Because is the like, Zerg are the Tyranids. <laughs> yeah, Minx is this giant asshole, and, but it's like because he's it's our the asshole, so of he's man. on our side, but then he betrays it because Jim loves yeah. this girl. And it's one of these stories where it's like, there is no big bad. Everyone's an asshole, which is why Jim Rayner in Brood War and StarCraft was such a great hero, because he was the sheriff from a backwater place who's like, I'm this guy who operates in a world of gray, and I'm kind of a fucking asshole myself, and we're all assholes. And it was such a good premise that, like, this is what Warcraft was not. Warcraft is that story where it's a prime evil and all this crazy shit and demon stuff. And Starcraft is, you know what? No one's really good. That's why all three sides are kind of okay. And that's why when you have the story of like Jim and Phoenix and like, we're going to kind of work with Kerrigan and Brood War. And then that horrible betrayal at the end of Brood War, you're like, that bitch. And like that mm -hmm. moment where Jim's like, I'm going to hunt you down and fucking kill you to the woman he loved. You're like, I can't wait for Starcraft 2. And StarCraft 2 is like an entire betrayal of that narrative. Yeah. yeah. It's like, now we're going to create something totally fucking different where Kerrigan's really important and Jim now is forced by the story to love her again. Yeah, it's, it's like, no, you can't kill her. You have to save her because she's going to save the galaxy. It's like, you know, and what? if it actually took a long time for him to sort of grudgingly come back around yes. to that. But the thing is, He's pining after her in the very start of Wings of Liberty after saying yes. at the end of Brood War that, hey, oh, I, I fucking hate you. I am going to kill you. I have to. Well, guys, the, the cut scenes, too, where they introduce the story in Wings of Liberty is like her wading through a city with her Zerglings and Hydros like rampaging through. And yeah, murdering, murdering every everybody. I mean, and, even and in Heart like, of the Swarm, uh, even in Heart of the Swarm, the minute she finds out that Jim, like she thinks Jim is dead. She destroys. There's cutscenes where she destroys planets, and yes. then at the end, Jim's like, "I'll always love you, darling," or whatever the hell he says. And you're like, <laughs> "That bitch just wiped out millions of people." <laughs> We're just gonna let her. Go. And you know what it is? It goes to I think my third point, which is Blizzard has forgotten how to write individual stories, and now is writing stories that are the exact same for all of their franchises. Yeah. Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo. You're absolutely right. This is what it is, and. Or, there's a big bad, and in order to defeat big bad, you need to go into big bad's realm, and that's the only place you can defeat big bad. Warcraft, it's it's Sargeras, Archimon, Kill Jaden, whatever. You have to go into the Twisting Nether now. That's like the new lore they just created just for this next expansion is basically you have to go into the Void to kill Amon. It's you have to go into Hell to kill Diablo. Like, it's one of those things that's like, okay, we get it. Somewhere you guys think that's a really like you think that's a really fucking great premise. And it is but cool, but not like entire Blizzard cool. Yes, but every franchise is the same. And then they have that same character flaw thing where it's like, we're gonna create a character who's the bad guy at first, but then is the good guy and it's gonna help you. Basically, Kerrigan is uh Grom Hellscream in uh Warlords of Draenor, where Grom is this He's like a horrible, he's murdering Draenei and he's this bad guy because his son Garrosh is like, let's go kill shit, dad. And then <laughs> by the last dungeon or the last raid, he, he basically gets betrayed. And now he's like, oh, well, the dude who betrayed me, what a dick. So let's go kill him. <laughs> and then at the end, and then at the end, he's like, we're not slaves now. Yay. And you're like, wait, what the fuck? That guy <laughs> murdered. He's the villain. He was the villain the entire, just because Gul'dan became a villain the last one third of the expansion doesn't make anything he did any less worse. He's still a bad guy. And now you're like, no, he's the, he's the war chief we all deserve. What? It's Kerrigan. <laughs> Kerrigan's like, I'm going to save the galaxy, but I'm also going to murder every fucking person in it. <laughs> you can't do that. That's not how stories work. Yeah. It, you're just, you're, oh, Blizzard. I, Blizzard, I've told you before. I know some of you are watching right now. I will quit YouTube. Let me work for you. I will write you a good story. <laughs> Let me work for you. You're killing me. I've played your games for 23 years of my life. Let me work. Let me fix it. Let me fix it. <laughs> Just let me fix it. You can't. I don't want you to become a Square Enix. Don't do this to me. <laughs> I will cry. I will cry tears of blood. That's the most dramatic I can get right now. Of blood. Bad. That's like some. That's some Castlevania shit right there. I will bloody tears like boo -da 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 -da. I will sit in a room and listen to that song all well, day. Well, I know what the song's going to be for break. You. Yeah. Let yep. me help Get you. It. it drives me crazy. I yeah, can't because it's I'm such a big lore nerd for everything Blizzard. I like dig everything Blizzard has ever done. Same and here. The Warcraft stories, like 
everything 10 years plus the last time there was a really good story was wrath of the lich king that was the last time there was a really good blizzard story and it was so good and then after that it's kind of like this attitude of like yeah sure the gameplay is great thank god the gameplay is amazing and i don't think anyone here would deny that starcraft 2 gameplay wise has yes. some really cool shit in it fantastic great. great single player campaign probably again the best single player rts campaign i've ever played and, and it sounds like the the pvp and the multiplayer stuff has gotten amazing gotten yes. even better yeah. I don't play that because I'm awful at it, but I'm in it for the story. And as a person who's in it for the story, I got z like it's progressively gotten worse, and it pains me. It pains I mean, me. from the perspective of somebody that doesn't really even care about story. StarCraft Two is kind of the reason because stories like this are <clears throat> complete padding, like complete wastes of time, unbelievably yeah. predictable. Yeah. basically zero character development throughout the entire damn thing when it came to heart of the swarm the only reason i listened to any dialogue was because abatha might speak and it was the same with um <laughs> legacy of the void the only reason because alarak might say something funny or cool or hey it's q from star trek and he's saying evil things it, that i didn't care about any other character in that not at all i didn't care about any of the dialogue there was no real development there was nothing that surprised me i knew where the campaign was going it was obvious there was nothing that surprised me at all in it whatsoever they uh, even the elements of the game which to me should have been like really interesting conflict arcs like the whole idea that the uh, the protoss have to sever their link to the collar and all that sort of thing yeah they barely really touch on it. The only character that they really push that hard with is the Preserver character who, like, flat out refuses for ages. Everyone else is like, okay, cool, I get it. You know, this yeah. thing that we thought was saving our race and literally has us psychically connected to fucking everything. I'm sorry. I mean, that's basically the Borg, for one thing. But secondly, yeah. you watch any Star Trek episode where one of the Borg gets disconnected from the Collective, that is how you do that. To them, it's the most traumatic fucking thing in the universe. Like, right. it's awful that this yeah. happened there are entire episodes in fact there's entire seasons of voyager that are committed to the idea that this ball got disconnected from the collective and now has to integrate into society yeah seven of nine's entire story arc is, is that like a journey of trying to disconnect from all of that and it's uh oh, it's so good yeah. i think i think inherently what happened and this is just a guess but in the 10, 15 years, however long it was, between StarCraft and StarCraft II. In the years that passed, Kerrigan became like this figurehead of that game. Like the character that people pulled out of it. Yeah. And so I think it was the She almost at some point became time, too popular. To, uh, can I make a wrestling comparison? I'm going to make a wrestling comparison. Kerrigan is Brock Lesnar. So <laughs> Brock Lesnar, huge, evil, kind of badass guy who just destroys people, right? comes in like 10 years ago and wrestling has this concept of faces and heels yeah a face the baby face being the the cool guy who the crowd cheers for and he gets the crowd around it's like yeah i'm awesome i'm gonna overcome the odds and the heel's like mm -hmm. i'm a dick i'm gonna distract the referee i'm gonna do stupid shit that would get me disqualified i'm evil blah 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 Th there are every now and again there's a character that transcends that because they become too popular the Undertaker is a great example of that. No one can ever boo The Undertaker anymore. They literally just had a storyline over the past six months in WWE where The Undertaker came back out of nowhere and kicked Brock Lesnar in the dick repeatedly. I am not <laughs> kidding. That is an actual thing. Like, right. did one of the most heelish things to one of the most popular wrestlers on the roster they could do. And you still got nobody to boo The Undertaker. You, it doesn't matter what he did. And Brock Lesnar is kind of the same as that, as that. It doesn't matter what he does. People like him so much because he's so famous. They can't boo him for what he does. Kerrigan is Brock fucking Lesnar like that. She's now so famous. She's so iconic. You can't have her be evil. You, yeah. you, you just can't do it. They won't let it happen. I think that's what's ended up happening with it. Yeah, it's one of those things where over time she became like the face. The face you associated with StarCraft was Kerrigan. It wasn't Jim. It wasn't uh, any random, like, it, it wasn't even a Protoss character. Like, most of the Protoss characters honestly were dead by the end of Brood War. Like, most of the important yeah, ones. True. And so, aside from Zeratul, who wasn't even made popular until StarCraft 2, like, no one was like, Zeratul's my man. No one ever said that. It was always like, yeah, Kerrigan is this hot space badass who then becomes slightly hotter when she becomes a weird alien creature. It's so, like, and so everyone's like, you had the dudes who were like, yeah, I'm into that. And then you had, because she's such a strong character, like everyone was just like, 
All the girls are like, yeah, her. fantastic. Kerrigan's amazing. Like, look at how powerful but she's, this but character she's is. An inherent, she's a bad guy. There's nothing redeeming about her character. And her story arc in StarCraft Two is, like, jammed down your throat. Like, mm. she will be redeemed. Even at the end, she's like, it's my destiny. Like, oh, oh you <laughs> That's you a cop-out. Yeah. I take and, responsibility for nothing I've done because it was my destiny. All right. And then, and then when they have the scene where it's like, the Zelnaga, the big split space blob, is like, you're going to become one of us. What does she become? A, like, fire Fire chick, angel. Like a fire yeah. chick. And it's like, Lena. you know what would have yeah. been amazing if Blizzard was like, no, she becomes a giant space blob. That would have <laughs> yeah. been the, the best. And uh, I would have been like, you know what? All this was worth it. All this bullshit was worth it. If she she's like, a tentacle She's like, Jim. Like, that would have been amazing. She became like a, basically like an, ab a, an abomination in order yes. to kind of save the universe. That would actually be a reasonable plot I point. Been totally okay with that. Yeah. Been like, but they, but then they were like, no, we're gonna make her a space angel instead because she's supposed and, to be hot. And then like, at the very end, of course, and because all right, I choose. She, she so here's my my head cannon on this, and I guess it's sort of open to interpretation. My head cannon is this, like. At the end, in the ending cutscene, you see Jim Rayner in a bar, and along comes human Kerrigan, and they yeah. ride off into the sunset together. That That's never it. happened. Kerrigan fucking died in that last level, and Raynor is a mess. He is a drunk. He is a depressed, suicidal, alcoholic drunk who hallucinates that, and then disappears because he went and killed himself. End no, of no, story. I, I challenge that and say, StarCraft Two was all in Jim's head. That's why somebody saw the ending, because he's at the exact same bar on my Oh, you think he hallucinated the, the entire thing? The entire thing. It was all just the dream? You just did a fucking Dallas on me? Because in the beginning of StarCraft uh, 2, he's a drunk at that bar. Just like a big drunk, and then Tychus walks in, right? But I imagine, because he's still watching the news, I imagine he just sat there and drank through, like, it's all in his head. The la That's my best ending. Jim, no, I no, choose to believe that. That's the, the ending, indoctrination the theory right there. The endings yeah. would happen. Here's what's going to blow your guys' mind. We get <laughs> Overwatch, kind of a new area for, for Blizzard. We had Hearthstone a little while ago. Like, they're going into new fields. StarCraft 3 gets announced, but hold your horses. StarCraft 3 is the new game to challenge The Sims for a simulator game where it's fucking Jim Rayner and Kerrigan making a house and you can build a city. <laughs> and they have a relationship. The they, they have kids. They have space dogs. They have a pool. And it just fucking rocks the world. StarCraft 3, The Sims. All I, all I know is that I feel like Heart of the Swarm and Wings of Liberty, all those games taken by themselves. I, Blizzard is really, really, really good at creating confined, tiny stories. Like, that's their jam right now. And I don't know why that is, but that's just, like, what they're good at. A perfect example is in um, Warcraft, in Cataclysm, the uh, Ashenvale into Stone Talon questline, where you build a nuke and then nuke peace-loving druids. It is... A legit amazing storyline. You're like, what? But Cataclysm is widely regarded as one of the weirdest, wackiest, like complete garbage stories that Blizzard has ever made. But within that was some really great storytelling. There and actually is, like, yeah. The questing in that like, in Cataclysm uh, was was great in that regard. Yeah, as you're saying, like those little, it's it's not a a whole like it's not a saga. You know, mm -hmm. it's the it's a it's those little short stories. They can tell little short stories really, really well. But when it comes to epic sweeping sagas and trilogies and long running storylines, they all end up playing out the same way, or they just go flat off the rails and they're full of plot holes. Yeah. And and it's and I feel like StarCraft did, had moments like that. It gave us really like Avatar, really great characters. I loved the story arc they took with Karax. I thought that was really well done. I liked his character. I liked they gave him the douchiest worst mission where it's like you have limited resources on a moving platform build carriers i was like this is a, this is pretty great and he, it, it, I, I like he was the, the only little, character with any development in that entire thing yeah, he became thing you know from had, a like, from a simple moments. face smith to a warrior that was the only bit of character development in that whole game yeah they had little moments that were great but overall when you put it all together you get what the what the epilogue was which was i feel like a dude walked into a boardroom and said we need to wrap up this story there will be no starcraft 3 and I, I get that. I feel like that's what happened. And I don't know if it's why, because we talked about it last week. Like, um, uh, a lot of people are saying, like, the RTS genre, just no one buys those games anymore. And I don't know if that's, like, it's, it's a weird, I don't know why, but as a person who loved the universe of StarCraft and loved the characters, I feel, it, it's, it's sad to see that's how it ended in a way that it felt like it was, 
we just have to wrap it up. And I think, Dodger, I explained this in my video that was literally just like, it reminds me of most 26-episode long anime where the first <laughs> half is like a legit experience. And it's like, this is amazing and beautiful. And then they sort of run out of money. And so the last 10 episodes is garbage. It's like, we got to wrap it up and end the story. So well, it's like... Yeah. Well, that's what the epilogue is, isn't it? It's like yeah. the, the epilogue to Starcraft 2 is literally that. It's like we have to wrap up the arcs of all the major characters, so we're going to do a three mission epilogue to do that. Yeah. It's and that heart, was kind it's of heartbreaking. It. It's heartbreaking. You're just like, I, it, it deserved, these characters deserved better. Like, it, I would have been so happy had I had, like, a Jim dying with Kerrigan moment. Like, that would have made me, like, he has to kill her, but, you know, all right, so she has to save the galaxy. Great. So, like, he gets both. Like, Jim getting it like getting back together with her human form at the end and like going off into the white light is like it's bordering on a lost ending where it's like they forgot what the point of the series was mm. and they're like but it's about the characters ah! it's like how did this possibly happen again I choose to believe it's a birdman style ending where it's open to interpretation but yeah, no, Jim was drunk in the bar for three games that's that's my story I, I'm willing to believe that I'm convinced that yeah I'm willing yeah. to believe that that's yeah, why he has such an idealized uh, view of Kerrigan. That's why he's willing to forgive everything because the whole he's thing. Drunk. Yeah, it was this <laughs> drunken fantasy of how he gets back together with Kerrigan and saves the universe. It yeah. ends with the tagline, What if Kerrigan was fat? <clears throat> what what if Kerrigan was, like, was a blob? <laughs> was, a, was a Zelnaga blob the entire time? That, uh, that would have, that that would have redeemed. Every Are you telling me it's shallow Hall in space? Like, is that what StarCraft 2 is? <laughs> yeah, and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yep. that's that's Good. what it is now. Jim, <laughs> <laughs> like I want to... if I want to, I want to put like a sort of a final explanations of uh, or of Coda, I guess, on the end of this before we go to a break. If you don't believe kind of what we're saying in terms of the story, you can download if even if you don't own StarCraft Two, you can download the starter edition and you can download something called Mass Recall. Mass Recall is the entirety of the StarCraft 1 and Brood War campaigns redone in StarCraft 2. You can play that for free. The whole lot. Mm. It's got all the original voice acting. They've redone the cutscenes and all the little bits. You know, the incredible mod. Incredible mod. And you can play mods for free with the starter edition, which you can just download from the Battle.net client. Go and play that. Go and play that through. Go and look at the character progression and how the story ended up. Then compare it to StarCraft 2 and tell me there isn't a gigantic disconnect. There's yeah. a huge disconnect between the two games in terms of how well the, the story is told. And yes, the campaign, I think, is a lot better in StarCraft 2. Huge, yeah, I mean, it's, as I say, mechanically Gameplay amazing. Much. Mechanically, yeah. yeah. Gameplay, I loved the hell out of it. I, instead of playing Fallout 4, I played the campaign and I had a blast on that day, yep. on launch day. It was wonderful. I loved it. And StarCraft 2 is such a great value proposition now. Spoiler alert, there's so much stuff to do. You know, go yeah. play multiplayer. I just reached Platinum as Protoss. I'm super happy with myself. I'm going to play little daily tournaments now. There's, and there's co-op mode and everything. And yes, we got paid by Blizzard to play the co-op mode, full disclosure. But, but like it was said, fun. Co-ops yeah, it's are fun. great. Story is bollocks. It's been bollocks since you day know, one. I want to put this out there, and this is just a thought. Now, probably next time I get a hold of one of the, the writers, I will literally just ask them this. But I feel like, you know how in Warcraft, it's very obvious that a vast majority of the players skip through cutscenes, skip through uh, dialogue, skip through everything just to complete gameplay stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's just because it's MMO or most people aren't interested, but I feel like that attitude of like, we're doing all this work and no one really gives a shit carried over into every other franchise. Like, let's make it really fun to play. Story, eh, as long as it makes kind of sense, we're good. And I don't know if that's what happened, but I feel Maybe. like that attitude of MMO players, just like, I want to get the loot, I want to do this thing, I want to do this, skip, 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 skip carried over into everything else and i'm curious if that happened because maybe i just want can we to turn spoiler alert it. off now by the way if we're not like yeah, talking about specific story yeah. okay spoiler alert is going go off there we go. yes we we do kind of need to go to a break there so we should probably probably do that to those just tuning back in for wondering what that mod was download the starcraft starter edition starcraft 2 starter edition download mass recall it's starcraft 1 and brood wars campaigns in starcraft 2 go play it it's a lot of fun and you can do it for free. We're and going to break. A bunch of other mods, by the way. You, you, like that's one of the that's a free game that you're downloading. Yeah, yeah. You actually get access to the arcade. You can even play co-op free. It's great. Mm -hmm. Do it, you idiots. Why would you not? It's free stuff. Okay. When we come back after the break, we are going to talk a little bit, a little bit more games, and then uh, wrap up the news and 
all that good stuff. So Bloody Tears was mentioned. So let's uh, have yep. a five minute break yeah. with it. Alexander, I've got I've got a Bloody Tears remix. I'm gonna do after the break. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Co-Optional Podcast for the final 40 or so minutes of the show. Alright, so, any other games that people have been playing before we move on? Because there's not a lot of news, so we might as well talk about other stuff. Uh, does Jesse <laughs> watching the daddy video over the it's, break I'm, count? I'm done, I'm, not I'm done. in any way. I'm, oh god, that's such a good video. It's so good. <laughs> Isn't it great? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Y'all need to go watch that daddy video. <laughs> well, if none of you have actually played any other video games, I do have one more that I could talk about before we move on. Do anyway. it. Do it. All right. <gasps> so, uh, Mordheim, <laughs> City of the Damned. Mm -hmm. So this is a game that's been in early access for quite some time and is, is now out. I believe Strippen has been playing a ton of it. And, uh, Jeff, you should be a little familiar with it. As it is, of course, a games workshop property. Yeah. It's uh, one of the lesser known <clears throat> games workshop properties. It, it was a, a kind of, it was a specialist game that was released quite some time ago. And it was a sort of small form version of Warhammer Fantasy. And the idea was that you owned a kind of mercenary squad in the city that was full of weird stone or warp stone. I, I, I think it was. It was actually just called Weirdstone at the time. And it was a really valuable, crazy with a resource. Y, though, right? With a Y, yes, Weirdstone. Yeah. And everyone wanted this shit for various reasons. Like, Chaos wanted it because they're Chaos. Skaven wanted it because they fucking love Warpstone shit. The, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the, the I kinda, like the reason Chaos the, wanted it because Chaos. A lot of other guys are just, we can sell this shit. So it'll be great. So all of these little war bands and mercenary bands came to this damned city to fight. And as a result, what we got was this uh, sort of small form Warhammer game where you had a small team of dudes that persisted through different battles. So just like Blood Bowl, where you have a team that persists and levels up through matches, in this game you had a warband that persisted and leveled up, and that guy, those guys could get injured, they could get killed, they could you know, acquire new equipment, they could level up and get skills. And for some reason, along comes a company that says, we want to make a Mordheim video game, like 10 years after the fact. And people are like, okay, I guess, go for it. And it's finally out. And what it is, is actually a very interesting turn-based strategy game where you have mm. a, a little warband. And it's actually done in third person. It's not like your regular turn-based game where you click and tell a, a dude where to go. You're actually in third person. Kind of like um, Valkyria Chronicles. Sort of a little bit like that. And you move your characters around and uh, every instead of having a grid, you've got a sort of... Um, circle a sort of radius that you can move so every time you you move a certain distance it takes like one movement point and it represents that with a circle and you've got action points and shit like that as well so the whole game is about developing your warband fighting other warbands looting as much as possible from the city and trying not to get your warband horribly killed and also getting this weird stone so that you can please your patron with it and send it off to them and like level up your reputation with factions and shit like that and so far, like, after kind of trying to learn how to play it, which took a little bit of time, it's actually got a lot going for it. Like, it's, it's pretty strategic. The way that it's done is really kind of unique. And I love how persistent your, your guys are. Like, and they can get injuries which can persist and cause you a bunch of problems. Like, my, on the second mission that I took, my leader got basically jumped by three guys and he got a, an injury to his eye, which, of course, affected his ballistic skill and everything. Hmm. Just like... Blood Bowl, you know, where they get injuries that kind of persist. And I'm uh, I'm actually enjoying it so far. It's pretty slow-paced, and the enemy turn times take way f too fucking long. <laughs> but if you can kind of deal with that, I just play it in windowed mode and alt-tab out when the enemy's doing their turn, kind of like Hearthstone, just look at something else. But so far, like, this game looks like it's got a lot going for it. It's got a lot of content, it's got a lot of depth. And if you're in for a sort of turn-based game that's cam that's a campaign with persistent guys, then I think you you might find quite a lot to like in this. Nice. Yeah. So so far, pretty good. My stuff has just been the the usuals. Obviously, not 
too much to report on this little game called Counter Strike. Uh, Legacy of the Void. Been really enjoying. I just started doing the the t- tournament thing that you were talking about, the automated tournaments. Yeah. Um, really enjoy it actually. I like I like how persistent they are. I enjoy that they are timed. When they first told me that, the idea of a timed RTS game was really appalling to me. I was like, oh my god, if I ever got there. But actually, 30-minute games in Legacy of Void are very rare. Real 30-minute games. Mm -hmm. And in a tournament setting like this, it's understandable because they just want to move people along. Um, And then, like I said, with Fallout 4, complaints aside, I've just been ending every night just chilling. Like, you can turn on a classical radio in-game, or you can just have nice kind of ambient sounds as you play. It's so open world and it's so diverse and there's so much to do that I I like genuinely feel excited each time I'm about to enter the game because I'm like, man, there's like this really cool area that I'm just starting to touch on. It was too high level a minute ago, but now that my combat shotgun has a silencer on it, which is just awesome, um, let's go check it out. You know, like just it's just got a lot of fun elements to that. So I'm just like genuinely I, I think it's one of the I best open world way. games ever. I mean, I need to oh, give yeah. it another crack and I hope. Because I've had that feeling before with the older Fallout games and with New Vegas and things like that. Even with Fallout 3, which really wasn't that great, I still had those feelings of wanting to go in and explore because I didn't know what I'd find next. And outside of the... A lot of open world games don't really have that feeling. Even Just Cause 3 doesn't really have that feeling. there's There's a big island off in the corner for uh, for Just Cause 3 and I thought, wow, I want to fly there and find out what's on it because there was no indication. I thought, oh, it's this big volcano. Maybe there's something there. And I flew there, and it was just like, nothing. And I was like, eh, yeah. it's, that kind of sucks. You know, that feeling of discovery is, is something I think I'm chasing, and I'm not maybe playing the right games for it. I think maybe I'll get that out of Witcher 3. I just need to sit down and actually play Witcher 3. December's going to be my, I'm going to play Witcher 3 yeah. finally. That's what I do, too. Because I, I want to get that feeling again. Give Fallout 4 a fair crack, like, like I know you're you're a high end gaming person too. Like if there's bugs and glitches, like that's oh, gonna God. really bite into you. <laughs> yeah. Try to distance yourself from that with Fallout because those are absolutely gonna happen. And again, the game has its glitches and, and its issues, and and of course, it's not so diverse that's gonna rock your socks. But I I went into it with a very like I enjoy Fallout. It's not a religious experience for me, and I just want to play an open world game. And I'm I'm actually like very fulfilled. I'm having a really good time with it. Yeah, it's it's a feeling I just don't get from a lot of open world games. Yeah, you just it's not a lot of them. I know they're just going to be open worlds that are filled with side activities just because they have to be. And a lot of the time, I don't feel like I'm on a journey, kind of across the map and discovering things as I go. Fallout, Far Cry Four had a bit of that. I felt mm-hmm. like every now and again, Far Cry Four sort of takes you on a bit of a journey that drags you across the map and then you stumble across something else as a result but i feel like a lot of open world games are so regimented in terms of the way their progression works that that can't happen like you can't stumble upon a story in many of them because the story is going to be triggered in a specific area and the only way you can trigger it is by doing a bunch of other stuff before that and since i know it's so scripted and so static it takes away that feeling of uh, discovery you that's, can that's fall one out. Thing, that's one thing Witcher does really nice is that, like, you'll wonder, you'll discover something, and it'll be like a note, and it'll be like, yeah, no, Phil, that, that key that you needed, it's down by the river. So if you ever want to go down there, you're like, okay, I'll go down to the river. And this one note you just found in a, like, box of some shit you randomly found will lead you on an adventure. And that happens all the time. And I was like, that's a really cool way of doing that, where it sends mm. you in different things to, like, it isn't like, I got this from the radio tower that said to go here, right? It's, I, I, li- I like they do that. And I think that's pretty great. It's a great mechanism to have in a game. Like, we can all tell the stories of those games where that experience did happen. Mm-hmm. And then we'll talk about that for years. Whereas the games that play it really safe, because that's actually the line they're walking to. Like, a lot of games are... I feel like they're almost afraid to do that because, and that's why Witcher 3 is so great and other games before it, but like the common person doesn't necessarily find those things and doesn't want to work as hard to get that story. So a lot of games do fan service where it's just like, next mission, next mission, next mission. If you want the optional, that glowing cave over there that says, you know, the dark cave of doom, like you can go do that. 
but it's not discovery. It's not like I found this thing that led me to that thing. And I agree with you absolutely. Like the games that I'll talk about for the rest of my life are the ones where that nuanced small thing ended up being bigger than I thought, and it caught me off guard that I had an emotional response to the game I was playing, which is really cool. That's one thing I'll give to Skyrim is that oh, for yeah. a long time, even in videos, I had this thing where I, I any fox, I just named Foxy Brown, and we go on an adventure. And it was literally just, I'm going to follow this fox, and wherever the fox takes me, this is the adventure. And 90% of the time, the fox would take me to some place where a legit story thing would happen. And it was like the craziest, I don't know if it was programmed that way, like, like a fox always runs to a certain location, like wherever the nearest story bit is. But if you followed a fox in that game, you would almost always find something crazy mm. to do in a story. Mm. And it was incredible. And I, I will never forget that part of that game, which is like, all right, you, you added something wild to this that I never would have thought was in the game had I not, being an idiot on YouTube, decided to go explore that. Right. And those are things that's, that, yeah, you're absolutely right. Stuff like that always sticks with you. And it's the stuff that isn't go here, do this, go here, do this, go here, right. do this. Yeah, well, I'll, give, I'll give Bethesda credit Vegas for that. that. Uh, even Oblivion did that really well. Yeah. And you came oh, across wow. some some really great stuff as a result. But the weird thing is that Oblivion was like two sides of that coin. Because the other side of the coin, the regimented progression-based bullshit, was of course the fucking Oblivion gates. Yeah. No. Oh god, that's, that's what killed my joy for that game in the end. Yeah, that was the bit. Every game. That was the bit where it's like you realize this is a video game because you know you have to close X number of these gates in order to advance and progress the story. And it's like, oh, right, okay, I just realized this is a video game and I've got to tick some boxes. The games that are truly great when it comes to discovery are the ones that obfuscate that story progression as well as possible. Yeah. You know? I accidentally beat Fallout 3. I didn't realize I didn't realize I was on the last mission. But what was cool about that <laughs> was it didn't the game didn't cease at that time. You could actually play beyond, which of course a game like that never should. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and you just go beyond. And then I had a fucking super mutant with a Gatling gun following me around. I was like, this game just got better as far as I'm concerned. Um, yeah, I, I had I don't know Fallout three and four or not four, excuse me, but New Vegas. I had that experience too, where like. So many times, I, I would just happen. I, the one that really sticks out at me is I went into like a village to trade or a town or whatever, and they all kept talking about their god and they're worshiping this god, this tree god. And you eventually meet the tree god, and it's a guy that got irradiated so fucking bad that he melted into a tree, and he just kept talking to people, and they thought he was a god. And you end up like killing him and, and changing their religion in the town. <laughs> and the New Vegas thing. is full of that. Like, yeah, it's, it's, like it's mostly because like the guy, the writing in New Vegas is just a lot better than it is in Fallout Three and Fallout Four, because they, you know yeah. the guys have so much experience. We're talking about Black Isle Legends, you know, guys that were behind Planescape Torment and Baldur's Gate, you know, games that were very narratively driven because they had to be. Mm. Translating that into a sort of three D world and doing it very I well. Right. I I want I want another New Vegas. I do. I I really do. That was a, that was definitely a game about discovery and coming across things that always surprised you. Yeah, and I, I think uh, some people are commenting too, and I think fair enough. I, I'm 20 hours into four, but a lot of the side quests and a lot of that's just crafting and stuff. I think Fallout Four is going to have some of that too. People are handing out as well, and politely not spoiling, but I, I think I think it's a good game for that as well. Yep. All right, is that about it for games we've actually played this week? I played Warhammer so, games. So Y'all don't want to hear about that. But. Actual <laughs> tabletop. Huh? <laughs> I might learn how to paint minis soon. I'm really excited. Nice. Octopimp does that a lot. And so he bought like a bunch of supplies and was like, you want to come over? I'll teach you how to paint minis. And I was like, oh! yes, so bad. Nice. When you say minis, what do you mm. mean? Like who? Figurines for like Warhammer. Yeah, what do you mean? Stuff. Are oh, they yeah, real okay. minis? Well, no, that's what it means to me. So that's uh, that's what I was wondering. That's mm. awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I've always wanted to learn how to do it. I have a couple of of just regular figurines that are supposed to be painted, and I just don't know how to do it, so they're just still in the box. And so I've always wanted to to try doing that, but I've never I've never taken the plunge. I'll do it eventually. That's that's one of the. It's funny in in the Warhammer and, and I'm guessing miniature tabletop wargaming at large. Um, I don't paint my models. I pay artists that are really really good gratuitous amounts of money to paint my models. And <laughs> like, why do you do Cheater. that? 
yeah, that's that's a lot of they're they're like what that's half the game and I'm like not for me. Like I really enjoy the models; they're gorgeous. That's hugely why I do it. But I I like playing the game. But I'm also a snob for quality, and I am like a nine year old child when it comes to painting. And I don't want to be like I, 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 I spent thousands of dollars, and all of a sudden I'm going to be like. He's got green eyes and they're blackish and and their claws are probably red. Like you're I, right though, I, it has to do with that. like what what part of it counts as like fun and fulfilling. Like, yeah. um, my boyfriend Sam, he thinks that it's crazy that I buy Gundams and like build mm-hmm. Gundams. He's like, why would you buy an action figure that isn't built? <laughs> like that's you like, so you silly. Like the process- but like that's the yeah, for me him. that's what's so fulfilling about it is like having a million pieces and being like i built a robot right like well, it's the same as a, why do people like jigsaw puzzles why do people like lego you know building things is uh, right. fulfilling i used to build model planes when i was a lot younger and then i'd ruin them with paint just like you say the problem with warhammer is that shit's so expensive and yes. you've got to put it on a <laughs> on a table and not be embarrassed of it <laughs> me, oh okay. yeah here we go so this is a knight Asheron, and he's, you can see it's in my hand, we'll call it 10, 11 inches. The model, <laughs> this model costs $350. Jesus yeah. Christ. To assemble yes. and paint it, I paid the guy another 600 Jeez. Uh, it looks great, though. Yeah, it looks, looks amazing. Great. Oh God, no, I... you've done it. You've done it now. TB is literally just going to go get his estate <laughs> Well, yep, here we are. We're at this point of the podcast. He shows us his stuff. Well, if, Yo, we're, I have the, if we're doing the dicks, I'll get my warlord. If, all if I have is a, that. I have a tracer and a doom hammer and a witcher. That's literally all I got in the back. I have all my bulmas, and I have yeah. a really cool hie, which is probably my favorite one. I don't know what a hie is, but it sounds stupid. Hie! Ah, uh, did you paint it, John? I, I didn't paint shit. Uh, what do so, you have? Wait, let's see it. As as you are probably aware, like I collect X Wing and I collect Star Wars Armada, who are both uh, you know they're both games that uh, Fantasy Flight put out their miniatures games, and they just released uh, the second wave of Star Wars Armada models, and the big thing that people were looking yeah. forward to was the Imperial class Star Destroyer. They started off in Phase One with the uh, Victory class Star Destroyer, which is the little shitty one, and they released the Imperial class. So this is about fifty bucks, and you know this is the this is the Imperial class Star Destroyer. And it all comes, all this shit comes pre-painted. Uh, incidentally, this is it to scale with a, uh, a Carillion Corvette. Um, it's a little, little, little Carillion Aww. Corvette right there. Which, in A New Hope, by the way, gets tractor beamed into its yeah. uh, it does. bay. Actually. It does. Take that, Princess Leia. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right. I do also have, like, a, a to scale. Um, X-Wing actually also has a Carillion Corvette. Bear in mind, X-Wing is the fighter game, so obviously everything is sort of to scale based on that. So this is the Armada Carillion Corvette. Uh, this is the X-Wing Carillion Corvette. <laughs> All right. While we're doing I'll get the Warlord. I'll be right back. I'll show you. I mean, amazingly, like, this is actually like quite nicely painted. I mean, this is a, like a $60 model. Um, I also have like the Imperial Raider to scale as well. And I mean, compared to Warhammer is probably better quality than this, but so much more fucking expensive and i just i can't i can't paint shit so you know these come pre-painted and they look good and i could just play with them immediately so go you know i honestly sometimes will go online back and look up them. like most expensive warhammer and then just see what pops up and it's always amazing looking wall of really titan cool. generally yeah speaking. like incredibly good looking stuff but also things that I'd be like, I don't, I could never. I don't trust myself in my with life. this. Yeah, I could never own this. Yeah, I had, um, and I never finished building it. I actually sold it before I left the UK. I bought a Warhound Titan, which uh, comes in resin parts, and it's like 350 parts. It's insane. Like, building that, I, I'm too afraid to fuck it up. Genuinely too afraid to fuck it up. Yeah, so that Warlord I just showed, it costs $3,000. To assemble it was a yeah. thousand. To paint it was fifteen hundred. That is an obsession. That's <laughs> yep. That's it's, the yeah, price that's... of a used car. Quite literally. And then I had the banners that are dangling off it are each uh, one hundred twenty-five dollars actually, custom made. Do you ever use that, or does it just sit there? It has. It's getting used today. I'm playing a game with it today with my buddy. Five thousand. Now, points. now, do you automatically win every time you play because? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, he's going to have similar stuff. So if anyone knows Warhammer, I'd say he's going to have a Phantom and a Revenant Titans. They're like Eldar versions, the Protoss. They're kind of Protoss. The they Eldar actually versions, are Protoss. <laughs> um, of way. that, but they are... This thing by itself will murder them, probably. We're, we're scaling his army to mine, and I'm, I'm foregoing a few things to make it more fair. Yeah. Well, I mean, Ooh, I'm looking at the Phantom Titan now. That thing's badass. That's sexy. Oh my They're god. Cool. I mean, you you got to give them credit. Like Games Workshop models uh, generally look amazing, but you are spending a lot of money for them to be to to be that good. Yeah, yeah I don't feel so bad anymore. <laughs> no, no. And- not my problem. Those Gundams are not even no, not even close. No, I mean, my I, Bulma problem. Oh, that yeah, yeah. I don't not, feel so bad about my no, Bulma no, 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 no. You and I, I got to say too, I got to get like, what's so cool about this? I and mean, we're all like fanatics of of our various things. Everyone is. Everyone has their loves. Like for me, you ask, do I get to play it? Not really, but it moves from room to room, and I look at it lovingly all the time because I, I don't even know how to describe this feeling. But like my parents did such a good job as a kid. Like I got Spawn action figures, I got Alien action figures, and like. I played with them, and they're really cool. They, they helped unlock my imagination. It was a big part of my childhood. And as an adult, that feeling, I don't feel like you get that very often. Like, a really cool game's awesome. Talking about games with you guys is awesome. But, like, having a piece of art that, that I then get to play with as an adult man is a feeling mm-hmm. that nothing else gives me. And I'm so thankful that Games Workshop and Warhammer 40K exist because I feel that every time. Like, when we set up our models and they blow it up and we're, I put the plate down and it, like, scatters over here... In my head, guys, there's fucking explosions. There's fire. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, this is war. It's just toys, but I'm, I love it so much. So it just brings me so much joy and awesome. And I, I actually like, I almost every time I talk about the cost of it and the ridiculousness of it, I know what I'm doing. I'm telling you guys how absurd it is. But oh, yeah. to me, it's not absurd. Like, if they made it more expensive, I wouldn't have bought it. I can't because it's, it's actually ridiculous as it is. But, um. I don't regret. There's no buyer's remorse. I, I look at that and I'm like, this could have been a Honda Cilantro sitting in my you know a driveway. I'm like, eh, <laughs> a Honda Cilantro? Been. What? <laughs> I, I'm sure it's a car somewhere. But Absolutely. Like, to me, I mean, I like, like my uh, Toyota Kale personally. It's very green. <laughs> I think there is a Cilantro. Very eco-friendly. I. You know what? Usually, what happens is I say words wrong, but they're words that are correct somewhere else. Let me. Google always knows. So Ultimately, no, it's it's the nature of, of physical hobbies. You know, I have Elantra. Elantra, there you go. There's an Elantra. So I wanted Cilantro. I have I over Elantra. 40 Star Trek ships over there. Like, they're not even used in yeah. a game. They're just from a collectible ship collection by a company called Eagle Moss. And they're like, I think it costs me $25 each. And they send me like two a month. And they're just on my shelf. They serve no other purpose than for me to look at them every once in a while and be happy that I have them. But they bring and, you joy, right? Yeah, they do. And I mean, that's what a lot of my X-Wing collection as well. I mean, do I play X-Wing very often? Well, no. I don't have a group around here to play it with. You know, I very, very, very rarely play a little yeah. skirmish game with Jen, but she's not hugely into it. So, uh, you know, they just mostly just sit there. But I always get the latest ones because they're great little models and I want them. It's the same with my Armada collection. You know, yeah. I've got two big fleets. I've never played that game yet. You know, I hope to eventually, but they still give me joy by being there. It's the same with a, my Airsoft collection. Do I go out and uh, play Airsoft competitively every week? Well, no. Will I eventually? I hope so. But that's I know you collect cool. Airsoft. There's some people who are way into that, man. Oh, I mean, that could be an expensive hobby. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, for, for everyone, everyone has their vice. You know, for a lot of people, it is it's video games. And yeah. honestly, compared to all of this, video games are pretty fucking affordable. Truth. I like it. I'm looking at... Uh, a blog of a person who paints Warcraft models and seeing like step by step painting of things, and I'm just like, oh, it went from huh? Hammer, hammer. Sorry, Warhammer. It's an easy mistake to yeah. make considering that they, you know, we Blizzard, just did, Blizzard lifted them. a shitload from 40k, particularly. But then Games Workshop doesn't get to claim victim because they lifted everything from everything else. As Absolutely, well. yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a guy, yeah, when I was getting my Warlord, I was all into, like, watching videos on how it's assembled and stuff like that, which, by the way, was is ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, he had, like, 20,000 views on a couple of videos where he's just like, all right, then, uh, put this here, magnetized it, and it just some British guy. But, yeah, it, it's really weird, and we do battle reports and videos online for Warhammer, and, and some will just have quite a few views for what it is. There's little pockets out there, little worlds. 
people that do this worlds, stuff. Little happy worlds. Whatever makes you happy, frankly. Yeah. Whatever makes you happy. I do need to actually play Armada, though. It does seem like a pretty fun game. I'll get around Should to it. Should we do Should releases? bring it over here and do that. Yeah, if I can figure out a way to get them on the fucking plane, it'd be easier for us to play X-Wing. They're much, much more transportable. Yeah. Armada's like, yeah, these ships are pretty large. Let's get a flight case for them. Yeah, we can do releases. Absolutely. I don't, there's really, like, no news to touch on this week that's really worth talking about. It, that's really to be expected. You know, uh, probably in the next couple of weeks we're going to be talking about our Game of the Year discussions and all that sort of thing. It's December. Yeah, Nobody expects anything to happen. It's end of the year. It's when people talk about what happened this year. So that'll be the next few episodes, I imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do the uh, the relatively small number of releases that are coming out yeah, in short. December. Yeah, let's... Uh, actually, it's not that short, surprisingly, but okay. Let's, uh, let well, us begin. Up, up until the 7th. Yeah, well, let's go. We only do a week at a time. That is true. Uh, December 1st, which is the day that this podcast is happening, we've got Just Cause 3, which we talked about. Mm -hmm. we have uh, we've got Tenshu General. Tenshu General, which is... Uh, it's an RTS. Apparently, it's a short form RTS. It's kind of like a crossover between an RTS and a kind of tile based war game by the looks of it. Cool. Uh, next up is <laughs> called Expander. Expand and Reach for the Stars. Uh, except it's not what you would think. It's like, yeah, this is a space game. No, it's blocks that have stars on them. Collect oh, precious stars by, by lifting and stretching your colored block. Shrink it to avoid obstacles. Yeah. Cool. Got Rainbow Six Siege. I'm going to around to playing that yet. Know. I do actually want to play that. It does I look really fairly intriguing. The beta. Look, you need teammates. You awesome. let me know. Yeah, I'm I'm up for playing some of that. It as much as a lot of people have turned around and said sixty dollars for a multiplayer game. This this one actually has some new ideas and isn't just like every other shooter. So I want to try it, even though they may have well, they absolutely have just thrown the license down the fucking toilet ever six since, since Rainbow Six Three. But hey, never mind. Next up is The Isle. Guess what? It's an open world survival game in early That's access. That's kind of what I figured. Of course Actually, it is. I think I I think I played like a really really early version of that game. I think maybe. It's got dinosaurs in it. It's just like we want to be Ark now. Okay. Yeah, most people do. Uh, we've got Kung Fu Panda coming out on literally everything. Oh, I thank God. That's, a, that's oh. super relevant. I know, yeah. right? That's a really weird time for that to come out. Yeah. That's that, why I'm wondering if it's a port, like if it was on one thing and then. Why would just you port now? a Kung Fu Panda now, though? But I it, don't know. You are right, though. It's it's got Kung Fu Panda Showdown of Legendary Legends. Yeah, uh -huh. it's a new Kung Fu Panda game. Uh, we should just bear in mind, by the way, that Kung Fu Panda came out in 2008. And There's a new movie coming out. There is. Oh, is that the why then? For, yeah. Oh, that's so. why they released the new game then. Okay, it's probably shit. Next. Uh, next one is called Planet Diver. Try to pretend you're enthusiastic. Let it dive. Ride the That's tiger. Do the night from the high. You went a bit Bee Gees there for a moment the there. I'm not, oh, whoa. I don't know if that was Dio. Dio. That's my Dio. That's your Dio? Wow. <laughs> don't I make a joke about staying alive, Dio. but oh, ugh, too soon. Rest in peace, Dio. <laughs> Uh, Planet Diver, adventurous daredevil tackling her newest obsession, uh, wingsuit diving. Cool. So, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a 2D well, wingsuit diving game thing. Sex. Okay. <laughs> Next up is Arcade Archives, The Legend of Cage for PS4. Wow. The Legend of Cage. Are they sort of releasing PS2 games now? On Oh, no, it was a 1985 game by Taito. All right, great. So just re-release of a game that's almost older than i am perfect and we've got chivalry medieval warfare coming out on ps4 which yeah. is a very fun game um tomorrow we have city economy what the hell is city economy i would Google imagine knows. it is an economic build it's called city economy service for your city oh, oh it is not that at all assume the many jobs of a service company and take care of a vibrant metropolis so mm -hmm. you run a company that collects rubbish Okay. basically and Clean uh, streets <laughs> yep i think there's plumbing involved yep street cleaners oh, are involved no. oh dear this is multiplayer not... co-op oh my god dodger we should go clean a street <laughs> let's clean streets there, let's there's your next streets. there's your next video right there can you at least Perfect. clean the mean streets or is it just literally the streets 
I think it's just, just the, the streets. streets. I don't they think they're mean. Cleaning. They don't look anywhere near mean. In fact, these streets they're, look pretty damn clean already. Yeah, they look they look pretty streets. empty. It looks like yeah. no one is using these streets. Oh man, yeah. we're cleaning Aww. them just for the good if of our you hearts. Can't, if you can't make a compelling reason to clean streets, then just count me out. You know what I mean? I don't, don't care. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Like, All right. Next. Care. Next is called Militia. Have fun looking for that game. It's a tile-based strategy game, basically. Perfect. Uh, what probably about... the least aesthetic. Not a very great aesthetic on this, I gotta say. It's probably probably a good game, but it just it looks very very boring. Just like looking at the screenshots. Well, what about the Legend of Dark Witch? Uh, it uh... is a 3DS 2D platform action adventure. Oh great! All right. That is not dark or appears to be about witches, although uh, it could be. I don't know. It has to be at some point, man. It has to be. <laughs> Well, what about Hit Tank Pro with Pro in all caps? That's got to be interesting. I'm it, guessing that's an addition, right? There was a Hit Tank and now there's the Pro edition. Maybe there's Hit Tank Pro now, yeah. This came out in 2015. It looks like it came out in 1992 on a shareware Good. disc. Good. Yeah, it's a, it's a top-down tank game that looks ancient. Next. Man. Well, the next one has a great name. May Jasmine, Episode 1. What is God? It's an wow. anime bullshit game, isn't it? That, it sounds wait, like it. Wait, but That's... what what is this game about? So what when can we expect God? you and Jenna to do a playthrough then? Never. That's not going to happen. Okay. I'll talk to Jenna. We'll see about that. <laughs> I will kill you forever. Next. <laughs> Next is the Light Empire. As opposed to the Dark Empire. Mm. Uh, it is a spaceship-based roguelike thingy. Randomly generated universe, take your crew to the depths of space to save your people. Uh huh. What do you mean, your people? Yeah, what do, what you, do you, mean? you mean, your people? Give me your people. Next. <laughs> Dorothy, in all caps. D A R T H Y. Dorothy. Dorothy. You get a Sons of Anarchy episode if you look it up. Uh. Oh. Hey, it's... that's not a bad thing. That was a great show. It is a great show. Roll, bounce, crash, fly, and die to free unfortunate souls in something that looks like, again, it was released on the Super Nintendo. Or we could not do that. Next. All right. That, like, Next is thing. called Office Battle. Okay, you got me intrigued. Is that a shooter? Because that would be morbidly dark. An office shooter? That would be great. Staplers? Uh, depends. Uh, this looks awful. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what this is. It apparently has 60 colorful levels. Uh, soon, many workers will lose their jobs because of a layoff. This is why Big B decided to organize a competition and the winners get to keep their jobs. My god. 40 items what? that you will never see in other games. Really. I take that as a challenge. Uh, that I don't even know what is going on here. This. Alright. Yeah, I don't know. Let's move on then. Yes. December 3rd, we've got Store Manager. Great. <laughs> It Store is Manager Cellular Edition. Oh, boy. This is about running a store that sells mobile phones. That's not surprising. Next. Yep. Given the name. Mm-hmm. Uh, next is called Monstro Battle Tactics. Monstro Battle Tactics. Monstro's, isn't, Monst- isn't Monstro one of the bosses in Binding of Isaac? Possibly. Is it about his battle tactics? Because he has very limited ones. Monstro is like chess, but the units have statistics, and your opponent is noticeably dumber than the average Grandmaster. Okay. What? <laughs> the game so puts it's... you down before you even like get into it. It's amazing. <laughs> so it's chess? Uh, it's kind of like, it seems like an RPG tactics game of some sort that may or may not be an update of a Commodore 64 game. Okay. Well, this next one sounds fantastic. <clears throat> it's called Corgi Warlock. I'm sorry, What? It's a side, it's an action shooter platformy thing where you play as a corgi warlock, but there's also, there's also the magic <coughs> pug and the fish mage and the prophet pig J. Okay. Good. It's cute looking. I don't know if it, it you know. I mean, it, it does, like a flash it, game. it is, cute, it, do, it does, but it is as advertised. You have to admit. It's yeah. like they said it had a corgi warlock. You play as a corgi warlock. And Simple as that. The enemies are really cute. Unlike Dark Witch. Oh my god. About that. There is, I, I have just discovered there is a Steam curator called No Curation, 
and <laughs> they are the only one who has recommended this game so far. It just says dot dot dot. I think they're actually just recommending every game and just putting dot dot dot. I'm next putting to dot it. dot dot on it. Great. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's really really sounds really valuable. All right, uh, next. Good goof. Next is called Dragon Quest Heroes. Indeed, it is. This is the Steam release of Dragon Quest yep. Heroes, which is the sort of um, Dynasty Warriors alike game. Although better than, which is set in the Dragon Quest universe. I am actually looking to play... I want to play the Steam version. I did buy it for PS4 and then never got around to playing it. So we'll see how yeah, the Steam version is. I didn't wind up playing it on PS4 either. Yeah. But. Hopefully this is good. Uh, though, do remember that Square Enix is being a bit weird. They're saying, oh, you put it on YouTube? We're going to claim it because we're dicks. Yeah. So just be careful about Ooh. that. I'm going to put it up anyway. Because, uh, you, hey, I, you know, I'll, get, I'll give them credit for this, by the way. Down to the bottom, they say they let you know that the maximum frame rate is 60 and that it supports 1080p as maximum, which is not brilliant, but I'll give them credit for at least telling you that before you buy it. That's nice. All credit to them for that. Fair enough. Well, next up, we've got Low Glow. Low Glow. Great. I wanted a game that sounded like a light bulb, then this would be the one that I go for. It's a uh, glowingly beautiful game with dynamic audio environments. But what is it? It's a puzzle exactly? game. Yeah, it's a puzzle, puzzle game. Okay. Physics driven with gravity, poles, and lights. Okay. What about Vampire Legends? Is that a puzzle game? How many fucking Legends games are we going to get this week? So it's not many. in any way a puzzle game. It's a hidden object game. Well, what about Save Your Mother? It's like an RPG Maker? Probably. Uh, it definitely looks like an RPG Maker, absolutely. That. Skip to the fifth, uh, sorry, the third screenshot, and tell uh -huh. me that spider does not look perverted as shit. Uh. Perverted spider, perverted spider, perverted. Where do you see this screenshot? Go to Steam. I'm Click on. The, Save your mother. You, yeah, you see the screenshot. So there's two videos, and then there's three screenshots after that. The third yeah, one. Then... Let's click it. Yeah, I don't see a spider. I see Becky. What? How? Oh my mm. God! Look at her butt. I see Becky. She got a butt. Are I you, know, link me. Are you even on the same... I'm on Save Your Mother! Are you even on the same thing as I am? Yeah, I'm on Save Your Mother, the Steam page. I'll go back to the other one on okay. the green light version of it. Well, you, I, I don't know. I'm on the Steam page right now, and there was a weird, perverted-looking spider. That's all I can tell you. I don't I see, can, know why I you can't Becky. see that. I see Becky in her butt. Does are you guys see. acting out like uh, telemarketing phone help? This is incredible. <laughs> what, what do you see? I see Becky. Have you and unplugged her your butt. router? Ah. I see yeah. Becky's butt. Turn it off and on again. I still I see, see Becky's butt. I see Becky if in you ice see cave. a butt, you're on the wrong page. Uh, let, let's <laughs> move on. Girl. All right, next up we've got Super Mega Bob. Super Mega Bob. Oh. It is a platformer thing. Uh, it's a 2D shoot 'em up platformer. Yes. Great. We've got Sid uh -huh. Meier's Civilization Revolution 2 Plus for Vita. Oh, oh PlayStation Network Vita. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we've got Dimension Remastered. I don't know if they can remaster it to make it any good, but hey, it's a, it's that was a kind of horror game. It's on the old 3DS. 3DS, yep. Well, they made another one, but everyone forgot about it. Indeed. <laughs> Next. December 4th, we've got Darius Burst Chronicle Saviors. It's a oh, uh, Japanese side-scrolling shmup. Next. Wow! Next, we've got Rise of Keepers. Rise of Keepers. It is a mix of old school RPGs, tower defense, and MOBAs, apparently. It's in early access. All right. Get resources, build structures, fight great enemies, find treasures, and of course, defend your base. Actually, well, looks kind of interesting. Although, it looks kind of like maybe a bit like Kingdom, but top down. Next. <laughs> Next is Into the Void. Which I feel like we've seen on this list before. Oh, Not is this today, but... um, this that space game? Uh, it's one of the yeah. Well, good guess. It said void. Yes, it it is a space game, of some sort. I thought this was in early access for a while, but apparently I'm I must be thinking of something else. It's a, it's a space RPG turn based battle thing. Hmm. I actually kind of want to play this. It looks pretty neat. Next. <clears throat> Next up is Xenoblade Chronicles X for Wii U. Big release, that. Very big. And finally, December 7th, we've got Square Cells. Square Cells. It is an ambient logic puzzle game. Which means Sick. It looks like a spreadsheet, basically. 
And those are your games for the next week. Have fun! Yep. I don't think people are going to be buying too many of those, but... It is December. It is maybe to be expected that things are starting to... Oh, God. The PewDiePie game is coming to Steam on December the 10th. Yes! I get to critique the PewDiePie game? Oh, this will be fun. You know uh, what? I'm so happy apparently, I'm told it's actually not bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy the little guy gets a chance to make a good game. Gets the little guy. There. Little yeah. guy, it's yeah. Nice. It's nice. I like to give the little guy a yeah. chance. I might play that. You know, it's great that for once, having a lot of money gets you ahead in yeah. this world. You know? You know? It's so rare that that happens. Full it's a bell circle. <laughs> Full circle. I bet, I bet the rank one guy in Galaxy of Heroes is PewDiePie. I bet, I bet it is. <laughs> Why not? Playing incognito. He's like, I am rank one in every game. <laughs> Just That you can pay for. Rank Indeed. one, rank one. When uh, XCOM 2 comes back out, I would, rec- I want to put my my shoe in as please have me back on the show. Cause I yes. Really... I am going to be playing that shit out of that. I am looking I will forward actually... to that. <sighs> I, will, I will play for a solid day straight. I'll probably just do that. Yeah, I would love absolutely love to play that right now but i yeah. can't i know and i and when they announced that they were delaying it i i was sad but everyone was like just be thankful they're not releasing a bad game I'm like no no you guys don't understand that's that was always gonna happen i'm sad that they're not on on mark with their timetable like i want it now <laughs> it's they're like same game only more levels more missions more guns more suits more abilities more monsters and i'm like stop saying more i'll just fucking explode right now uh, Can't wait. Yeah, well, I I'm willing I'm willing to wait for it as long as it's good. Hopefully, they fix some of the issues that uh, XCOM had. They probably haven't, but to be fair, if you want something that's more faithful to the original XCOM game, just go play Xenonauts. So that's pretty legit. For those people, sure, I loved the the remake of XCOM. I thought it was I yes, it's not the same. No, it's, it's got not a lot to it though. But it was fucking incredible. I that's like that's like my number two game behind StarCraft. I love that game. I did play a lot of that. I played about 100 hours of that game. Jesus. I played like 1,000. Yeah. So. I, I, I had a lot of problems with that game, but I still fucking played it because it was that damn compelling. Yeah, and I, I was terrible too. There, everyone has this... I mean, not terrible, but you have that guy in the chat who's like, mm, it's not even an ultra hard difficulty with Iron Man. <laughs> what a scrub. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. And it's I not like it. the same. You know, it's it's not the I played the original XCOM games. It's not the same, but no. what it was for what it was, it was good enough. You know, yes. it was a good like interpretation of XCOM. I, I will give it that. And it's, it's not like you can't just go yeah. play Xenonauts if you want something that's more faithful. You know, you can. It's, a, it's it's got a lot of the same nods to it. A lot of the same. It has the same kind of feel in a lot of ways. Not all of them. Yes. But what I like is I find it refreshingly difficult in an era where. Most games, I'm not punished for dying. Like, I die, it reloads me two minutes ago or whatever. Even the same scene that I'm in that I died on. So it just... I, I started to care about my characters, and the game forces you to do that. And that feeling is so unique. Like, even in Fallout 4, your guy can have a nuke dropped on his head. He'll take a knee. You have the option to give him a stim pack, or you can just wait 30 seconds and they'll stand back up full health. And it's like, well, there's no risk. But if, but if things can die, you all of a sudden care. It's so cool. I think you should play Mordheim on that basis then, because I think you might get the same thing out of Mordheim that you did out of XCOM. Yeah, you said squad base. And you already yeah. Had me yeah. I, I Name the that. guys in your warband. You can even change the colors of their stuff, so when they do get their eyes gouged out by Skaven monstrosities, you'll feel bad about it. Damn. Okay, I'm checking it out. <laughs> Indeed. All right, I think that's uh, pretty much it for the day, folks. Thank you very much for watching the Corruptional Podcast. We would, however, love to let you know where you can go and watch our videos and give us money and let us live. That would be great. So, Jeff, what are you going to be doing over the next couple of weeks? You're, you obviously stream a lot. What's going to be going on? Yeah, and just thank you guys so much for having me on. I, I really enjoy talking games, and you guys are awesome. It's so fun to do it with you guys. Aww. Uh, yeah. Uh, Flattery will get you everywhere here. <laughs> well, you know me. That's that's how I've done it. I'm the flatterist, as they say. Uh, I stream on Twitch at InControl TV. Um, I have an Instagram where it's almost entirely dogs and Warhammer models, but I'm trying to diversify from that. That's also InControl TV. Don't, don't diversify from that. Those are the only two things that matter. I, it's pretty much it's an interpretation of what I see in life. Um, I do do some YouTube videos, although my channel's not worth you, like, caring about, but I still want to build up the numbers because that's what I do for a living. So uh, I believe that's in Control TV as well. And then if you like the stuff I talked about, 
I think the most interesting way for me to share that is on Twitter, uh, e.g. in control there. Mostly about StarCraft, but I'll make jokes. Um, I'll talk about things. That's where you can find all my stuff. Whenever I stream, I always tweet there. Um, a lot of pictures. Going to go play some Warhammer tonight. The Warlord Titan, Dave's Belly, as I named him, because I literally named that model, is uh, going to walk out on the table and blow some shit up. And that's, that's what I do, guys. So thank you so much. Fantastic. Jesse, what's coming in the channel this week? What's going on? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I don't – just doing stuff. Just making the videos. I'm not trying to hard sell. I'm just going to tell you that if you enjoy uh, video games and having people talk over those video games, boy, do I have a channel for you. And uh, on Twitter, at Jesse Cox, and that's where I'll be. And, and hopefully people will stop leaving, stop bugging me now that their favorite games are coming back because I took, like, three weeks off to just play StarCraft. So, there. Oh, Joe, what's coming up on the channel this week? What's going on? Hi, guys. Uh, well, on my channel, there hasn't been anything for like a week because I was uh, in Oregon for Thanksgiving. But we've got the Undertale Genocide Run VODs going up finally and going to hop into some new weird games. So if you like weird anime bullshit, that's what I deal in. <laughs> and... My social medias are at Dexbonus, D-E-X-B-O-N-U-S. And if you would like to watch my streams, it's twitch.tv slash dexterity bonus. Thank you so much. You're She's helpful. wearing my stretched out hoodie. <laughs> it's hers Sorry. now. Coors. It's way too big Coors. for her, I'd imagine. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's, like, it's actually more like a snuggie than a hoodie on that size. Never mind. That's what a sweatshirt is, man. Yeah. yeah. All the time. Not much coming up my channel this week. Got, uh bullshit chemo tomorrow so i'm gonna be chilling for a few days probably playing games on my steam link simple as that maybe some hearthstone think thinking about that i actually play a lot of a lot more hearthstone lately and i managed to avoid talking about it for the entire show but i gotta i gotta say like some of the the cards they brought in and this new little adventure have completely changed the game like how about that card that swaps out your entire deck for all legendaries it's not in the game yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I will play the shit out of that card. The Golden Monkey is going to be mine. There's so many fun things to play with now in, in that new expansion. Uh, waiting for the next one to... I think it's uh, this week uh, on Thursday. The next episode of that is out, so I'll be playing that. Outside of that, though, uh, I do want to try and look at Rainbow Six Siege at some point over the next couple of weeks. I think that's like one of the last major releases that I haven't covered yet. And I may look at Hard West. I've played a bit of that. Outside of that, though, I'm going to be trying to work on the Arbitrary Awards, which are my end-of-year video game awards, which usually take me about a month to make. So that's probably going to be the priority over the next few weeks. Can I, Before we end, can I just read to you the email I just received from my mother? I told you there would be one. <laughs> I told you there would be one. Yep. Um, okay. And the best part is it's two emails, no actual text in the email, just a, a, a header. First email... I have laughed more at this podcast than I have in a while. No underlying meaning. Second email, but tell Jeff he's not invited for tea. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Wonderful. Thank you very much for watching the Corruptional Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. If you missed any part of the show, then you can go and watch it on the VOD right now if you happen to be a subscriber to the channel. Big thanks, of course, to the subscribers for supporting twitch.tv slash TotalBiscuit. If not, you can uh, watch it on Thursday when the VOD goes up on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash cynicalbrit. Thank you for watching the podcast. We will be back next week and... If I remember correctly, and let me just double check my calendar, next week's guest indeed will be Pro Jared. So he will be joining us for <laughs> talk, and no doubt our Game of the Year discussions will begin. Goodbye, we are leaving now. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.